Good morning, y'all. Welcome so, so much. Thank you for uh, joining us once more on this wonderful uh, Easter Sunday. For those of you who are on the religious type, happy Easter. Uh, I don't really go in that direction, but I know it is Easter Sunday regardless. Um, there's a couple of other things that we wanted to touch on the show, but wanted to welcome everybody, of course, first and foremost. This is your co-host, Miguel Antonio Barragan, a.k.a. Fight Fiend Migs, uh, uh, joined, as always, by my co-host, Andrew Don't Get It Twisted Labashe. Uh, and this is the Mad Boxing Show on a wonderful, lovely, nice and warm, slightly windy Las Vegas weather uh, Easter Sunday. Um, so there's a lot of fights this weekend, um, so many that they had to split them up within two, two days. It wasn't just Saturday, it was Friday and Saturday. So we're going to go through the main fights of the weekends, of course, the headliners. Uh, there's a lot of fights on the undercard, which were great, but, you know, because of the main, main juice that we want to get into being the uh, Tim Zhu and Sebastian Fungora uh, card on uh, Amazon Prime pay-per-view, uh, that's the one that we're going to probably spend the most amount of time talking about. But before we get into all the details, Andrew, what is going on? How you doing, dude? How's it going, Miguel? Well... I'm kind of sore. No. If please you tell already, us why. Please tell you us. already know why. I'll tell it. I'll let everyone know. If you guys see me jump up, it might have a cramp. <laughs> if you see me throw the headset off, I might have a cramp somewhere. I was in a Spartan race this weekend with my nephew, some of the other family friends. Um, it's uh, we were out there like well, we went out four deep. It was mm. Robert. Uh, Bugsy, my nephew Robert, they're both named Robert. So I got to call oh, one by what we call him, right. Bugsy. Uh, then there was uh, his nephew, there was Jesse, and then there was Jose. Okay. We all went out there and we met about 45 other guys, 40 okay. other dudes. Oh, yeah, they were, we were large, bro. <laughs> There's a large circle I, they, got, they, they run with. Yeah. And um, we all did this, this beast of a Spartan race, uh, 13 miles long, 30 obstacles. Um, I completed my 13 miles. <clears throat> I did maybe 25 of the 30 obstacles uh, at the end. Around mile 11, bro, mm. started slowing down for me. Break it down, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, things that I had never felt before, Miguel. <laughs> like my knees, my knees yeah. just started hurting and then it went away. And, and granted, my wife gave me everything. Dude, I was, I was like running around like the medic out there, bro. The only... <laughs> You know, I got a backpack. I'm all looking at the other OGs in this Spartan race. I'm like, hey, where are your guys' backpacks? Where, where, where? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're all laughing at me. I'm like, oh, well, my wife set me up, yeah. dude. So yeah. I had everything out there. Um, but around in, I, I keep saying round, in mile 11, bro, yeah. started slowing down. But you know what? I did. I completed it. And then the final two um Obstacles, I did yeah. do those. They're the big ones, uh, right? Yeah. Nice two big ones at the uh, end. Pow. And I was given Look this. Fuck yeah, I was dude. given this. Uh -huh. And so so that's for completing this one. And then they have this guy. And oh. I guess what the thing is, is you do the other two races, and it makes uh -huh. like a, a nice medal showing that you oh, completed see, see. the trifecta. Gotcha. So I got the first piece to that. And I did, I guess... Oh, no, I think the next one's an ultra. I don't know if I'll ever do something like that. I got to see about the trifecta. But if one of them, this ultra is like 30 miles, dude. And I'm Damn. like. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. I mean, those yeah. guys are, those, that's like for the more advanced people I have to assume, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, you can't be doing that shit like, oh, I've never done it before. I'll, I could do 30, you know, like. 90. I tapped out in mile 11. So I don't know if I'm anywhere near this ultra. <laughs> if I better have a wheelchair out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. Miguel, there was times where I prayed, you know, I got to Easter early. Right. I got to Easter. I like, got to uh, like, let me get, get me through this. And <laughs> I want some double days at the end of this, guys, please. Yeah, no, it, it was, uh, it was, um, legs were bouncing on some of these things, man. My, oh. my, but it was good. We got through it. My nephew got through it. He took off. You know, he showed, he showed his age at the end. He kept going. So yeah. I met him. I met him at the finish line. Um, but it was a good, good experience. Uh, if you like to test yourself, um, you know, you like to run, be outdoors. Eh, mm -hmm. It's a, it's a cool thing. Spartan race is cool. Um, I would do it if my nephew does it. Yeah. I, I wouldn't do it for my own little hobby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe when junior hits a certain age, you know, if I'm still old enough, yeesh. 
That's that. that well, I'm that sure there's like a, a level for people who are even in that age range, right? Oh, like, I'll smash you know, his level. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> it's like, no way, little kids. Yeah. No, just <laughs> like fucking stiff arming everybody, little little kids. <laughs> oh damn, dude! Tell tell everybody what what you placed again. Remember you were telling me earlier, like what you're using. Oh yeah. Ah, so my my wife just sent me a screenshot when me and Miguel were starting the show, and. It's saying from the age group of 40 to 44, I placed 89 of 158. So I thought yeah. that was cool. That was, I'll that, take that, that as a small victory. Yes, yes. It's not dead last. You're like, boy, I'm like dead last far as, <laughs> yeah. you know. But even that guy got a medal. So it's like, hey, you know, you, you finished it, right? Hey, and uh, that time, mm-hmm. yeah, it was pretty funny. We started really late. We were there, oh. but we came on our own time. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> I'll finish it when I finish it. Yeah, <laughs> but the guys there are just chilling for a long time, Miguel. Hey, I was like, Wait, is this what we do? We just hang out the, the start line? Or, no, it was good though. It was good. Oh, that's fucking tight. So, you, you gotta, yeah. you gotta start wearing that, that you know, that fucking metal. Do you be like, like the PPC guys with all the fucking like, bam, this is where I belong. Like, long yeah, long that's what. This shit. That's what I was told. I, I'm told if I walk into a gym with the B shirt, many of the. <laughs> The Spartan ah. family will will recognize, so they so that's cool. I'm doing a lot better than Tim Zoo is doing mm-hmm. th- yes. today, but we will get into that. But yeah, that was my <laughs> weekend. Bro. If he would have finished the race the way Tim Zoo's face looked at the end of that fight, I would have been concerned. I'd be like, no, you're not gonna do any more races, bro. That's enough. Okay, that's, that's more than enough. But but as you mentioned, we will get into that later on. Of course, that's what we're gonna primarily finish the show on. Uh, but uh, we will. Hey, start- Miguel. Yes, 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 please. Let me give you a teaser of where I'm gonna go. Please, please do so. Ask me if I can see. Can you see, Andrew? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll um, move on. I'll we'll be back. There. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have our opportunity to touch on that. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna start with uh, even though the uh, Valdez and Wilson fight was on Friday, that card co-main event was a little more exciting than uh, the Saturday fight with Gilberto Ramirez. So we're gonna start with the Gilberto Ramirez fight. Um, he fought last night um, and uh, basically became the first uh, cruiserweight. Uh, or the first uh, Mexican-born uh, to win a cruiserweight title. He became the WBA cruiserweight champion in a unanimous decision victory over the gentleman's name, who I'm going to butcher, Arsene Garula Marin. Um, that's that's as good as it's going to get. I've heard, you know, um, the, the zone commentators uh, mention it several times. But, you know, if you ever watch a fight with my dad, you know my dad doesn't stop talking. So I'm, like, trying to listen to what they're saying and at the same time listen to my dad talking about the fight. So uh, we're watching it. You know, Gilberto Ramirez did uh, make history it seemed as though he was kind of soft. You can see it in his midsection. It wasn't exactly the Ramirez that we remember from, you know, 168 or even 175 for that matter. This is cruiserweight, so the limit, I believe, is 200 pounds. He weighed in at 199 and something on Friday. So you can tell that, you know, physically, his opponent, which I'm going to, I can pronounce his first name a lot easier, Arson, A-R-S-E-N. Um, it looked like he was, you know, he was built. He was fucking rock solid. So uh, the punches were just not affecting him as much as they were um, Ramirez. And Ramirez, to his credit, was able to take the shots. Um, you know, this is the this is the the output we would have liked to have seen against Bivol. For whatever reason, we have our own reasons, our own tinfoil hat reasons. Uh, he didn't. Um, performed the same way against Bavol, but he threw a lot more punches a couple of times. So there was something going on with the ring, with the canvas, with like the logo in the center, because they were announcing um, Ryan and, and Haney on the canvas. They had a big ad on there, and the fighters kept like slipping on it or something like that. I don't uh, know if you caught that, but every so often the fighters will keep slipping on that. I don't think anybody actually like fell per se, but a couple of shots that uh, Ramirez landed on Arson, kind of threw him off balance. But then you watch the replay, and you see it was like a slight slip on the the ad on the canvas. Uh, but nonetheless, it was a pretty decent fight, and you know I, I would like to watch it again, maybe analyze it even further. It was pretty one sided, according to the fucking judges. It didn't seem that way. Um, I, it, at least you know round by round, it didn't seem like Albert like Ramirez was like that far ahead. But ultimately, he got himself the victory. I kind of got the impression that it was. Like, you know, De La Hoya and his, like, ex-girlfriend type thing again being like, no, we're going to get to Cruiserweight before Canelo does because 
If we remember, Canelo at one point did uh, talk about going up to Cruiserweight and trying to win a championship there because no one had done it or no Mexican-born fighter had done it prior to him. Um, well, somebody beat him to it, I guess. And uh, it's because you know, I, I want to say at one point, even De La Hoya talked about uh, having Gabriel Ramirez be like the fr beat Floyd Mayweather's uh, record of like 51 and 0 right. or some shit right. that, you know, it's like, stop worrying about that stuff, dude. And, you know, he's, he's here. He is doing it again. He, he never explicitly said that he's trying to beat Canelo to it, but that's exactly what he did. Come on now. That's pretty, pretty obvious. Um, but nonetheless, Gilberto Ramirez got himself a victory and the belt at Cruiserweight. Cruiserweight is one of the least, you know, recognized um, weight classes uh, that I, I mean, I don't even remember the last time I even saw a cruiserweight uh, fight. Um, it might have even been, you know, Usyk a, f a few years back. Um, Andrew, what do you, what do you think about this? What's, what's next for him? What the hell can he do? I mean, is he going to have to do the same thing that we talked about with Benavides and potentially go up to fucking heavyweight because the dude doesn't seem to have that kind of, you know, meat on him. He's a big dude, but he looks soft in that fight. Well, I think you, you hit it right there with that name, Benavides. Um, it's a good move for Ramirez. Look, he tried the best at 175 light heavyweight. He got handled. They're moving on. You gave him a little bit more weight. We all know he can build into the cruiserweight division. He's a big guy. Um, try to build up a, a title defense record, right? Put some title defenses under your belt. And when Bevol possibly or better Bev or Benavides try to move up maybe he's there and he gets a nice portion of the check because he'll be a a champ with uh experience right he'll, he'll have some belts so i think it's a move that oscar and them they had to do they there was no at light heavyweight he's nothing but a contender now he's a champion so mm. it's a win for them um i didn't watch the fight uh unfortunately i it, it was really weird that that fight got past me uh, I, I don't think Oscar did a very good job or Golden Boy did a very good job of promoting that on social media with me not even knowing mm. that it was taking place, you know? Um, so that was kind of weird. I was kind of thrown off that, that Ramirez fought on DAZN and I didn't I didn't see it. Um, not even a weigh-in. You know what I mean? Like, most of the time, you're going to get something in during the fight week. A press conference, an arrival, a weigh-in. There's so much that goes on. It's weird that I missed that. Maybe it was a Spartan race. I definitely knew about the Valdez fight, and I knew mm. about the um, Zoo fight. So, kind of weird for Golden Boy and Eddie. They got they got to do better up. Come on, zone tighten up. I follow you on Instagram. Man, they're gonna probably send hella stuff on. Look, you asshole. <laughs> you know, right? Well, dude, just the fact that we're saying it, it's like you know, our phones are always listening. Like literally, like this yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hope uh, damn, the algorithm is gonna start throwing shit at us. Um, I mean, I want to say I knew his fight was coming up, you know, Ramirez, but like um, I, I, I might have checked because it wasn't because it came across my Instagram feed. It's because I was looking for it. You know, I tend to go to like ESPN or Boston scene or something like that for the schedules uh, for the Boston schedule for that particular weekend. And I was like, oh, shit, Ramirez fight. And then it's like, oh, it's on the zone. It's like, all right, cool. I can, you know, toggle back and forth. And right. I mean, considering there were a few other names on the card that I wasn't too familiar with, I was like, I'm like, I'll watch it later. Like, it's going to be on the zone. I can always watch it later. I did the same thing. I went out on Friday um, and uh, I got home and then I saw the, the Valdez fight. So, you know, everything else I got on my feed, but I had to kind of look for it and it, I kind of stumbled on. And I was like, oh, shit, I guess he's fighting, which isn't a very good indicator. You know, I mean, this is kind yeah. of what might be the norm at Cruiserweight for Gilberto Ramirez because I mean, yes. who else is he going to fight? You know, the, his best bet, as you mentioned, is to just kind of stay there and, you know, fill out into that weight class. And during the time of that process, wait for somebody to, you know, a light heavyweight to eventually move up and basically get himself a, a nice payday of a fight. Beyond that, I don't know, but yeah, I, would, no. I would have liked to have seen them stay at a light, at light heavyweight a little bit longer. Cruiserweights are not uh, typical American fan favorites. Um, we want to just see you move up to heavyweight. Why are we playing around? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? well, it's just, there's just so much weight, man. I mean, you know, from, from 175 uh, being the limit for light heavyweight to 200, that's 15 pounds. And this is this is one of the things that I've said many times, at least with me being a fan of MMA, um, there's just too much space in between these weight classes, man. There's a lot of guys that are uh, too small for the weight, or I'm sorry, too big for the weight class beneath them, but too small for the weight class above them. Because in the MMA, there's 10 pound differences between weight classes. Some of them even 15 pounds, some of them even 20 pounds. 
So it's wow. like this is how it gets later on in the heavier weight classes in uh, in boxing. We have between 175 and that's 15 pound difference. Uh, that's uh, or 25 pound difference uh, between that and the cruiserweight. It's like, dude, that's a lot of fucking weight. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, it won't benefit you to come in at the lightest of the weight class. You have want to be the heavier of the weight classes. So that's one of the reasons why I would have liked to have seen uh, Ramirez stay at 175, even if he didn't beat Bavol. Okay, so be it. There's a lot of other names at 175, and I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, again, we just saw, um, what's his name, Benavides, that's going to be you know, moving on to 175. So there's other people there for him to fight. Yeah, maybe not. I I, I would have thought he would have, it would have been a lot sooner of a paycheck if he would have stayed at 175 and then have the guys that maybe super middleweight eventually move up to fight him. And we'll have some recognizable names there. So cruiserweight, not so much. I think, you know, like I said, Usyk was the last time I saw a cruiserweight fight when he knocked out below. And then... um uh, maybe fucking Holyfield back in the day. I, I think he took. He a, has a he has a belt. He has oh, a man. belt. So now he has oh, a potential yeah. pay per view. He's Raleigh fucking Romero, and I'm not jumping. <laughs> I'm, but I'm just telling you what he is. Yeah, he's, he's got Raleigh leverage. Romero on on the the radar right now. You're gonna have Benavides if they're really thinking about. We're just talking about him moving to heavyweight, right? He might yeah. never get the Canelo fight. He's been a heavyweight in life before. He's talked about it. Now he's an athlete who might be able to put those pounds on with muscle and see what his hand speed and his power is like at the heavyweight division. He has the size to grow. So he's got a potential pay-per-view fight with him. And if Canelo's still into belt grabbing, which we all know Canelo's, you know, he's, he's, he's done in his career. He's not, you know, there's a belt there. Yeah. Tank did it with uh with um who's the guy he fought at 140? Barrios. Uh, Barrios, yeah, Mario Barrios. Barrios. Yeah. yeah. He went yeah, up there, not the belt, come back down. Yeah, everyone does it. So so he's in that position. Let's give them credit for getting him back to there. Um now you hold on to that belt, try to get your little title defenses on, get wins, get nice little paydays, and hopefully one of those big paydays. Ramirez keeps winning. He's known in the Mexican community. Diehards know him. Benavides is a star. Maybe just putting it in with him with the with the potential move up. That might come future down the line. Might be a big fight. So um, hopefully they're thinking in that that way because yeah, everything else at cruiserweight's been dead in America for a very long time. So mm. all right. Well, um, you know, props to to Ramirez. He you know again made history by becoming the first Mexican born uh, champ or fighter to uh, to win himself a cruiserweight title. Um, hopefully, good things come for him in, in, in the near future. The rest of the card was wasn't half bad, um, but of course that was the main event, and that's what I wanted to talk about most because that was the least favorite of my fights this weekend. Uh, we're gonna take a step back and go back one day to <laughs> Friday uh, for the uh, Oscar Valdez and. Um, Liam Wilson card, uh, which was on ESPN Plus, brought to you by Top Rank TR Boxing, Top Rank Boxing. Um, so that was that was a fun card. That took place in um, uh, Arizona. I think uh, they said it was Phoenix. I think I'm not. I don't remember. Oh, Glendale, Glendale. So um, uh, first and foremost, of course, there was a co-main event that was that was pretty solid between uh, two, uh, two women. I can always, I remember. I can't remember her last name. It's like Valley. I don't know how to pronounce her first name. Like Yo Costa or something like that. Uh, who had two belts. And then uh, Sinesia Estrada, uh, super bad, who had two belts as well. They unified the minimum weight division, which I think is 105 pounds, 108 pounds, something Yeesh. like that. Yeah, there's t tiny women. Very small. Yeah, uh, very small. Yeah, and uh, they uh, they basically unified, you know, and they they uh, Sinesia Estrada came away with the victory, um, and uh, it was um, it was a lot closer than than I, I, it seemed. I guess like there was a couple of times um, where um, Estrada was like kind of mocking uh, Valley. She was like doing this like. Toro thing, like bullfighter kind of thing, the way um, uh, I think uh, Matt Lomachenko did once before. So uh, it was it was a pretty solid fight. You know, I was I was looking forward to it because that's kind of that's the good. It's the bad and the good of a female fighting. It happens in MMA as well. When when you see two names that you recognize, I recognize who these names were, and I was like, oh shit, these girls are fighting cool. But then you kind of forget what weight class they they fought in before, and you know that's one of the downsides is oftentimes they have to move weight classes. This one seemed like these women were had been in the same weight class for a while, so I was like, oh shit, okay, cool, they're going to unify the division, um, and you know there's going to be an undisputed champion at that weight class, which I don't even know if there has been prior to this. Um, but, you know, that's kind of the the novelty hasn't faded away. You know, when you see two female names that you recognize, you're like, oh, fuck, yeah, okay, I, I know these chicks. All right, I'm down and watch them. Um, so that served as a co-main event. 
Um, it was fun. It, it was an okay fight. You know, I mean, it was as, as entertaining as it could have been. Um, I believe afterwards, uh, Strada did say that she plans to move up in weight. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I guess it'll be flyweight. I'm not sure what comes after that. Uh, but um, Or strawweight, I, I don't know. Uh, but she intends to drop the belts and then move up in weight class. She did what she needed to do. There was a lot of beef between these two chicks. Like, Sinias Estrada was talking mad shit about Valley, and then and so was was her. Um, they, at some point in the, I think early in the fight, there was a really bad uh, head headbutt that caused a cut over over Valley's. Uh, I think it was her right eye. So um, after the fight, Valley even went as far as to say, like, yeah, that shit was on purpose. Like, I know you did that shot deliberately. Um, you know, there, there was still beef talk and a bunch of crap uh, smack talk after the fight, which kind of made things still pretty juicy. But nonetheless, it was a pretty entertaining fight. Um, I don't know. You know, Siniesa already said that she's going to move up in weight class. So we know what's next for her. I'm just not sure what weight class that is. Uh, Valley might stay in that weight class and maybe, you know, try to gain the belts again. I don't know. But it's one of those things that you've talked about before, Andrew, where it's like, you know, we get the fight and then and then what? And then and then nothing, you know, and then it's like. Can we get a rematch, maybe, you know, and kind of keep the, I, the spark on, you know? Yes, yes, 100%. Can we get a rematch before we move up? Um, there's a lot of back and forth on, on you know, could have went either way, should have been a draw, is what I'm seeing all over the internet. Um, with them being so light, you would think that they would look at, and being from a very proud country in boxing, right? Yeah. So yeah. you think this might if this fight um gets a lot of uh what is the word? If it's if it's a great fight, why wouldn't yeah. you bring it back? Why wouldn't you take it to Mexico, try to sell out a crowd, you know, maximize your your profits sure. with it? Um I I don't I don't understand why the 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 total want to just move up. I've done what I did here. And they got beef now. Right, they got it. Yeah, well, they got it. They had beef before. It didn't seem like they squashed it at all. So, but with the head bunt and her accusing her of of doing it purposely, you think that would be even make the fight hotter, right? So, I say if I'm Oscar, I try to bring this one back. You've got the zone. You've got top rank, ESPN. It seems like big money for these girls. Don't. Nobody should go anywhere. Come back to the table and see if ESPN and the zone want to see this one again. So the the um they had the fight I want to say at um, in Glendale it was Glendale Arizona um and considering that that uh, Estrada is from from L A like take it back to L A like let's have or you take know, it, do to, it yeah do it at the fucking you know crypto arena whatever the hell that or you know Staples Center the, whatever they named it now uh, or or anywhere else for that matter there in Southern California like why not you know make it a headliner why, I'm sure you can have you know there's already a built in storyline of their beef before this fucking fight because. Uh, even like during the the media week uh, events, um, Estrada was like, "No, like I'm not trying to be your friend. I'm like fuck out of here," you know. And it was just it was nasty. So I was like, "All right, cool." And you know, you know how nasty chicks can be towards each other. So they were they were bringing out the damn nails, right? And and Valley, to her credit, was trying to keep it professional, but she's like, "No, nah, I'm I'm whooping your ass." It didn't turn out that way, unfortunately for her. But we have ourselves now an undisputed champion. It would it would be nice. It, it would be it would be smart, I guess. On their oh, you know what? By the way, hold on. So, so the 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 zone and De La Hoya had nothing to do with this. This is all top rank because Sinesa was with Oscar at one time. She's with top rank now. So basically, it's all top rank. It's all ESPN plus. It would be smart of them to get this fight again to to run it back. Um, why not? You know, like what else is she going to do? Where else is she going to be able to make as much money as you know someone that she's already beaten <clears throat> and. There's there's a built-in storyline. There's a built-in beef. Let's go ahead and what's the word? Dry that well before going on to another well. You know, like why not? There's still money on the table. I would have to assume for a po potential rematch between these two ladies, and, and maybe maybe we can get ourselves a trilogy out of it or something if she loses. Yeah, and I don't. I mean, she's a hundred and what pounds? A <laughs> hundred five, a hundred eight. Yeah. What, so those, where, where are they really going? I don't. I don't even know what the next division is. It, it just seems. It, Seems like they're yeah. too small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, like, I, I want to say it's because I know the smallest of the weight classes for men is 108, I believe. 
Um, so I think there's one extra smaller weight class, which is 105 for these ladies. I think, I, don't quote me on that, but I thought, you know, considering women generally are smaller, that there's an additional weight class for them, for even smaller women. So I think that's where they're at. It's called the minimum weight. And then they're going to, I think, I have to assume move up to 108, because then beyond that is 112 flyweight, then, you know, 115 super flyweight. So I don't know if she's going to want to, you know, gain that much weight. But nonetheless, um, she, you know, I, I don't know if there even has been an undisputed champion in that weight class prior to her. So one way or another, you know, Sinias Estrada made made history, um, probably the most famous minimum weight fighter that we know. Um, it's we're kind of in the same boat as you know Gilberto Ramirez and fucking uh, Cruiserweight. It's like, well, you're gonna have to, you know, yeah. figure out stay in that weight class or move somewhere where there's gonna be some some notoriety and some names where you can make some serious money. Um, and I don't think moving up in weight this at this point here. Uh, is or, or unless maybe perhaps they have a rematch at the heavier weight, they both move up, and then it's like, all right, we still have that same beef storyline in place, and they're fighting for some sort of vacant title or who you know it's the race yep. to who wins you know undisputed at the next weight class above them. Um, so that's that's something that they can think about. Um, I mean, we're, we're not financial advisors by any stretch of the imagination, but this is probably what you might want to do to maximize your profits to the fucking maximum because. Um, how many times are you going to be, you know, if, she, if she's going to move up and wait, I don't think she has any belts already at that weight class. So she's going to have to be a challenger first and foremost. Um, anyway, it was a pretty fun fight. You know, I enjoyed it. It was a nice co-main event. Um, I didn't know at the very beginning if the fight or prior to Friday, if that was going to be the main event, considering it's a title fight. Um, and I didn't find out until later that, uh, you know, the uh, Valdez and uh, Wilson fight all was also for a belt. I think it was for a vacant belt, but we'll get into that here shortly. But I wasn't sure which fight was going to be the main event and which one was going to be the co-main event. And it wasn't until Top Rank posted it on their um, Instagram page that, you know, Valdez was the main event. I was like, cool, I'll take it. So that leads us to, of course, the main event. Um, Oscar Valdez taking on Liam Wilson for, uh, I believe it was the vacant WBO super lightweight title. Or no, junior lightweight title, sorry. So uh, 130 pounds. Um, did, did you catch this one? Were, were you able to yeah. watch this one? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So um, my dad, my, I, I went out that night. I came home. I went ahead and I watched the fight afterwards. My dad's like, oh, you know, you, you're going to love watching this fight. It was a good fight. I was like, all right, cool. Let, let's check it out. Um, it was, To me, it, it kind of, well, before I even get to that, um, Oscar Valdez came away with the victory. He won by seventh round uh, TKO slash, you know, stoppage kind of thing, ref stoppage, right? And uh, in uh, in doing so, got himself a belt back at 130 pounds, the WBO title. So he came away with the victory. You can see the emotion in his face, the relief. I think he had a lot of pressure on himself. Looked like, looked like Mayweather Gotti all over again. <laughs> yeah, right. Kind of yeah. left me there going... Why is he? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, you know, losing to to Shakur, then losing to uh, I'm not sure if there was another fight between, but then losing to Vaquero. Uh, so I think he was kind of like, damn, there's no fucking way I can lose a third right now. So I think that was really more so pressure on himself. Um, he. Oh, I know. Hey, I'm process. just. I'm just being a jerk, but it was kind of like, <laughs> come on, bro. Yeah, like come you didn't on. Shakur, fool. I would expect that if you whoop Shakur's ass. Yeah. But yeah, yeah he, like he just <laughs> entered the the ranks of the. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean? Things. I don't. Hey, and I get it. They're under a lot of pressure, like you said. He might have been, he might be, might be celebrating the fact that the check, another check, another big championship check's coming. I get all that. I'm just being a jerk. But <laughs> while he was, while they showed him doing it for an extended period of time, these thoughts started coming in my head. I, <laughs> yeah, hey, like, well, Dez, I, I, I don't know if you've seen the odds, bro. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if you see what the insiders are saying, but chill just a little, man. Yeah, let's pretend like act like you've been here before. Yeah, let's yeah. Go do that. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, but anyway, so he did come away with a victory. Um, I watched the fight. Uh, it seemed like same old, same old. You know, it, it, it I didn't see anything different necessarily from from uh, from Valdez. Um, I back in Jesus Christ, back in 2012, the day before uh, Marquez Pacquiao four. Uh, Top Rank had a smaller card the Friday before at some local casino here that I actually attended as a member of media back in 2012. And Andy Ruiz fought on that card, and so did Valdez. And I still have the fight card to this day. And one thing that I wrote about back then about Valdez is that he fucking is left hand happy, left hook happy. He just throws that left hook like like Ryan, sort of, I guess. And when I say like Ryan, I mean like, it's like rarely a jab. It's just boom, like he leads with that fucking left hook. And 
he, he he threw a few more jabs, I guess. You know, in this this fight, he rarely threw a jab. It, it, not to say that he doesn't have pop, but he he's the kind of fighter that breaks you down, right? He's not the kind of fighter that um, that is generally like that has that one punch knockout. Although, you know, I understand that he beat um, Burchelt, but it was after rounds and rounds of whooping his ass and then finding that one that finished it. Um, right. He was doing this with with Wilson as well, but I don't know. I can't I, I, I can't budge the feeling that. Uh, shake the feeling that he just doesn't have that kind of pop. You know, he doesn't have that sort of power. You see the way he throws his punches. He throws them like balls to the wall. And, you know, they do hurt the guy, but it's it's not a one-punch type of thing. Um, he, it was accumulation, really. And that is ultimately what beat down Wilson is accumulation of, of punches. Um, I, I enjoyed the fight. I'm not going to say I didn't enjoy the fight, but I didn't really see anything different in um, in Valdez. Maybe a little bit more patience, maybe a little, trying to use his head a little bit more. But, you know, when the when the punches are flying, it's Evander Holyfield. It's like that goes out the window and then you start fucking throwing down, right? And that's kind of what it seemed with Valdez. Um, nonetheless, he went ahead and got himself a victory. He now has himself a belt. Can have a little bit more leverage in some of these other fights because there's the other champions at that weight class, of course. Um, and um, one, you know, uh, uh, Shakur, some of them already, already beat him, you know, in, in Shakur and Vaquero. So uh, he's got options. He's got options. But, uh, Andrew, what did you think of the fight? I mean, you hit it pretty good right there. It didn't move the needle for him at all as, as for the fact that he's uh, got a belt, so he gets a bigger check. You know, that that's – but as far as legacy or ranking or like, oh, yeah, give him the rematch to any of his – no, it, it didn't do any of that. It was a very um, um, oh, what is it? A workman like? I think that's what Lee okay. would have yeah. called this, right? A very workman like <laughs> yeah. fight, man. Um, I'm glad he did it in front of his hometown. Look, he brought it. it like you know, it was entertaining, but yeah. when you're expected to beat the guy, uh, it's just it's not it's not um, as impressive when it's it's balls to the wall and and you're getting nicked up again and. Same Valdez. It's the same Valdez. And there's been many. Jojo Diaz was another fighter that I thought was trapped into this. You got to get them in big fights. And, and Valdez has had big fights. I'm not saying that he hasn't, but they never grow. They Their, their, their um, skill stays the same throughout the career. Valdez has clearly shown that. He's, he's this one fighter. He's never going to change. Sometimes he wins when you put him in with the best. Most he's most of the time he's not gonna win. You know what I mean? And and um the Burchill fight is a good fight to hang on your your roster, but it Burchill's not an all time great, right? Sure. It's so it's it's sort of like Danny Garcia's Lucas Matisse. You know, you kind of really got to know the game to be like, oh, yeah, that was a badass dude that he beat that night. And besides that, Valdez is never over accomplished. Um, and that's just who he is. So he's got a belt. Get him in with another fighter. He's exciting. You're going to get your money's worth out of him. I wouldn't bet the house on him, though, because he's very hittable. He's very beatable. And the best have shown it. So, for unfortunately, the needle don't move on that on that radar. So, it's the same. Same Oscar Valdez. Congratulations for the belt, though. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, it it didn't, um, you know, watching the fight. And my dad was, you know, he like he's a fan of, of, of Valdez, so he's like, yeah, man, you know, you're gonna enjoy watching it. And sure enough, I did. You know, I'm not gonna say I didn't enjoy watching the fight. I most certainly did. And you know, that's the first thing. And uh, usually, whenever uh, I I miss the fights initially and I go back to watch them, I don't watch them from the beginning. I just watch the main event, the co-main event, and then when I have time, I watch the rest of the undercard. So when I got home Friday, uh, that's the first one that I went to was the, was the Valdez and Wilson fight. Um, you know, Wilson's been in there with some tough motherfuckers he he was um in there with with vaquero and now uh you know uh, valdez um i don't know what what you know he's he's got his ass beat a few times pretty bad you know what i'm saying he, yeah. he damn near surprised us against i guess vaquero against navarrete but um turned out you know navarrete is the man is the man um so he's kind of in his weird position like he's you know the, the b-side he's kind of the opponent and with with um with a victory over Valdez, that would have really would have put him, made him, you know, really put him on the spot, on the map, I guess, put him on the map, and unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way. Um, you can tell that, you know, that his punches just weren't there. He was landing on uh, on Valdez, but he just doesn't have the pop, doesn't have the power. If Valdez doesn't have the kind of pop that we think, uh, what's his name, Wilson has even less than that. So, 
let's see what what comes next with both of these guys in particular of course valdez because i guess um this makes him the uh, interim champion at, at 130 for wbo and the the champ is is not Marete, who just took the, the belt so uh, i don't know um it is i uh, did i read this correctly or, or remember correctly is Vaquero going to 135? Is he trying 135? Because I think that's what I read, which is why they made this fight for the interim belt in the event that Navarrete decides to stay at 135 and decides to drop the WBO belt, then um, Valdez will pick it up as you know, the actual champ. But this is for like the, the interim title, I think it was. Um, do you remember hearing anything about uh, Navarrete? No, not about, no, not about uh, if Navarrete is thinking about moving up. Not yet. I am... Um... I don't want to see that fight over again, though. I know that. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, so, what I was getting at is that there are other champions. Even though he got himself the yeah. interim belt there, there are other yeah. champions. And I pulled it up here. Lamont Roach and, and Sho- Oshaki Foster are the two that pop out the most. There's an Adoro Dor- Joe Cardina, which I'm pulling up here on ESPN's website. But uh, any one of those, I mean, specifically Oshaki Foster, because that dude, he's entertaining and, you know, he can put on some good fights. Fighting and he him just be- signed with top rank. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah so, he just uh, signed with top rank. So th- there is some uh, some entertaining fights at 130 still, you know, uh, plenty of them. So I think uh, any one of those would do them would do them good. Um, I I just you know I would say stay away from from like you know, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, no, you know, we already sometimes yeah. he's stubborn, right? But uh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah. No, you're fine. No, I, was, I said yeah to what you're saying. Yeah, I don't want to see that fight over again. Um, with the Foster, you know. That that helps Valdez would get another title under mm-hmm. his belt, um, or and it would put him back, you know, put him back in the championship rankings. Mm-hmm. Turn it around for Foster; it's him beating a very good champ, ex champ, you know. So that mm-hmm. would set off his. So that fight makes a lot of sense for both guys right there. It's a winnable fight for a veteran looking for a belt, and for the the I don't want to call him too young because I know he's been in the game, but he's a young champion. That's yeah. a great name to have on your roster trying to get a big fight with one of the other guys. Um, I think that's the most doable fight there would be a Foster Valdez um, matchup. Yeah, that, that'd be an entertaining fight. And they always say that there's a common phrase in the fight game that, you know, Styles makes fights. And, and that would be pretty entertaining. You know, not only would it be, you know, you may perhaps unifying belts or going after whoever has the belt at that point. Boxer but, um, versus brawler. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah that, that'd be something, something to look forward to. Um, but overall, it was a pretty solid card by uh, by top rank. Um, I, you know, it's it's kind of they, they do this every so often. You know, when there's like a major event that weekend, they'll actually change whatever fight they have to a different day. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say change. They see it ahead of time. Like um, they did it for uh, for Shakur during like Formula One weekend here in Vegas. They had his fight like on a Thursday, and someone else I forgot who else they did it. But top rank does that every so often. Whenever there's another major event that weekend, that they're like, uh, our card isn't as strong as that card, so let's do it another day. They did it again this weekend, but they did it on Friday, which I don't mind. It's, it's I don't need it. No, make it easier for me to not have to toggle back and forth between the two uh, channels or the two streaming services. And it's like more fights spread out through the weekend. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, boom, Friday night and then Saturday night. Um, that's one of the reasons why I don't mind the Saudi Arabia cards or the you know UK cards because those generally come in the morning. So I'm like, fuck yeah, I get bucks on Saturday morning and then I get bucks on Saturday evening. And as is usually some sort of UFC card that evening as well, so I'm like, damn, this is this is fucking tight. Um, and of course, considering yesterday the major card was uh, Sue and, and Fundora that we'll get into momentarily, but um, you know, I didn't. That was the that was a card of the night. You know, I wasn't switching back and forth between that and Gilberto Ramirez by any stretch of the imagination. I wasn't doing that. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of happy that they did it on a Friday, and it was kind of cool. You know, you kind of forget sometimes. And and I, uh, th- when Thursday came around, I saw that uh, Valdez and and Wilson were weighing in and i was like what the fuck i said like, oh shit that's right it is on a friday fuck and then i remember that it was on a friday and you know caught the friday but uh not mad at top rank for doing that on a friday because again it's like a win-win for us i don't have to be talking back and forth and you know i i get more weekend uh more boxing out of my weekend we um, came home yeah from junior sparring oh yeah that's friday. right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so you got the video i did of, i did of one kid Junior sparred two on that night. Oh, and did you record both or? or? Yeah, I got oh. I got some of the second one. I'll send oh, it right. to you later. I didn't want to post them because I didn't want all the the drama. You know, oh my god, two kids. 
Shh, don't tell the wife. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Just between you and me and everybody. Just watching. between us, bro. Don't let her know. She's oh, at shit. she's at church with the kids right now for Easter. I'm mm-hmm. a little sore. I haven't had to jump up yet, but that's what I was nervous about was being at church and freaking start cramping yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah. They're so. gonna be praying some stuff for Easter here, like ah, my leg. Or my thigh or something. Like, <laughs> out of nowhere, just yell out. Like, my fucking calf. It's fucking like, whoa. What's going on with this guy over here? So, I play. I got that card out. She was like, yeah, just help me get the kids ready. I was like, yes. I can't stay home. Get up, everyone. And turn into a freaking drill sergeant. Yeah. Everyone up now. Shower. Get out of here. Yeah, attention. Did you did you put anything on like like a sports cream or anything to help out the muscles? I mean, besides yeah, like the she's, typical, right? she's got the spray. She just sprayed me, numbed yeah. me up. Yeah, that was about it. it does, um, that, does it feel like it works? Because there's like, like the what is that one um, fucking brand that Shaq always? If uh, they were paying uh, me, if they were paying <laughs> me, I would say yes. That makes sense. That All right. Every I think when you, show. I think when you spray it, like you feel the spray. <laughs> I think that's when your mind's supposed to tell you that it's working, and you're like, "Oh yeah, look, uh, it's working." No, I'm just kidding. I don't fuck yeah. it. Maybe I don't know. I was limping before, and I was limping after. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't really know if it works or not. But she did. She did spray me, so she was trying. She was absolutely trying. Um, but yeah, no, Junior sparred. I was very happy with his uh, his sparring. The one that I sent you, that's kid number one, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, the young man had amateur uh oh. fights junior doesn't um junior was 72 pounds he was 68 so i thought they you know i was like whatever let's if mm-hmm. they want to run it we'll run it um and i thought he did good hey eh? so so i'm happy he wasn't he didn't tell me no more dad on the drive home so we'll, yeah. we'll move on to to the next one see what happens there and dude then, I, I don't i need like like i mean every so often you would yell out like some sort of instruction because when i heard somebody yelling was that for him or was that for yeah. the other kids that's I'm, for the like, other yeah, kid for that's oh. for the other kid um manny manny is his trainer he was in his corner i think he might have been um talking to you might have did you hear two guys or only one guy oh damn you know i don't remember yeah if you're only hearing but... if you're only hearing one because i didn't really listen for that I didn't really listen to see, but Manny was there. Manny, his trainer did show up for it. Props to him, Tracy Boxing. So that was cool. Um, and uh, and so yeah, you could hear the other guy who was trying to you know tell tell his kid a little bit more. For me, it was a fill out. I just wanted to see. I just told Junior what to do when he got into the ring, and don't want to give him overwhelm him. Right? Just it was a fill out. This was all fill out process. This first one to see how he was going to react to combinations get and sorry hey sometimes my head is moving but not yeah. the phone <laughs> you know, I, have to... I saw that i saw yeah. that yeah i thought you might have had it on a tripod just pointing directly and i was like uh and i was because like i was out i was like wow oh, fire the cameraman you're fired fire the, <laughs> fire the cameraman what the fuck was that damn it <laughs> yeah that was my bad i thought you were gonna turn it but but yeah i because there was a, a time where they were on the corner here on the nearer corner and i was like yeah. is it the camera not gonna turn what's going on like is it is nobody manning it? Who's but is he on a break? What's going on? <laughs> so it finally happened. There's your update on on the this sparring match. Yeah, guys. the first official, right? I guess the first official sparring. First match. official hands off. Yeah. Bell so it's gonna be is it gonna be a weekly thing? Like, are you just gonna like yes. it has to be like all right, let's do it every other week or something to start off? We're gonna try at least once a week. Um, the trainer. Slick Rick boxing over there in Manteca. They were talking about if they can do one on a weekend. If we're both free, maybe we show up on a weekend date too. So with, with the um, same kid or, or, or just um yeah, two kids. There's two kids, and I don't know. I don't know how many other kids he has there on this huh? date. He, there was two boys there that were junior size. That's something oh. I don't have in Tracy. They're just oh. they're all teenagers in Tracy. They have a lot of kids, but none junior size. For oh. junior size, it's like a revolving door sometimes, bro. I would say for the the two years that junior has been doing it, you a lot of kids come, but then they're gone in a few weeks, few months, shit like that. Oh, that blows. 
Yeah. yeah well, so, so here's the thing. Like, I, I don't know if like a lot of people realize this, but Friday is kind of the sparring day, huh? And like, I realized this like later on in life because I mean, I, I did some stuff like MMA, but not really like boxing. But um, when I started getting into media, uh, this one dude who I was like working with was like, "Yeah, go to there's a, a gym here in Vegas. Well, several gyms here in Vegas, but it's like go on Friday. That's usually sparring day." And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So that seems to be like the universal thing. Like uh, depending, I don't know how you choose, but basically whenever Fridays come around and it's sparring day, you either, you know, all go to one gym or you go to a particular gym. I'm like, this particular gym is like hosting and a bunch of kids from different uh, and not just kids, but like younger guys come from different gyms and spar in that one gym. Um, is that, was that the case with yours? Like, was there like other No, we had set gyms? it up. No, oh, we had okay. set it up. I had set it up through social media. Uh, I knew he had a, a young man there, junior size. Um, so I set it up through through a DM, direct message. And okay. and um, I do know of a gym on Wednesday night that does that, though. That's Felipe oh. down in Stockton. Uh, mm -hmm. Every Wednesday night is like open sparring night where you could just show up. And if there's a fight, there's a fight. Yeah. So that's pretty cool, too. Junior has done that. Unfortunately, when he got there, nobody his size Put him in with someone bigger. Everyone do light stuff. So, yeah. it, it, but Junior did show up to do that one day too. So. Oh, all right, cool. Yeah, dude, that's fucking tight. Like when you saw me the picture, I was like, oh damn it! Like, oh, well, Lee would have loved to have seen this, right? Like, it just oh, that would have been fucking sweet to have. It would have been on the way. internet, most likely, Miguel. Yeah. <laughs> I know, dude. It would have been like I'm flying you know, down, Andrew. Shut up, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> or I'm driving. You would write. Yeah, <laughs> I'm driving, driving yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. No, it's fucking. Of course, man. Of yeah, well, that's fun. I mean, that, that's cool, though. Like, I knew because you had told me recently that that was going to happen. It's like, all right, now we're going to be sparring. I was like, all right. And then I kind of forgot about it. And when I got the video, I was like, oh, shit, that's right. He was going to go sparring. And then, you know, I saw that the video and that was that's fun, man. It's like I sent yeah, it out. I sent it out right before the main event. I sent it to every oh, all yeah. family, all family, <laughs> just family members. No, uh, no Internet, no nothing like that. That's all. That's yeah. all it's about. So just yeah. to show you, Junior has begun. Yeah. And he didn't he didn't tell me no more. <laughs> right. That, that's uh that's a good sign. That's a good sign, right? Yeah. It's not like he comes home and is like, I don't want to do this anymore, Dad. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But no. Uh, but anyway, that's cool, dude. That's cool. I'm 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 digging that. I'm digging that and looking forward to seeing, you know, more videos uh of his uh, either either on your YouTube channel or like sent to me directly. But I'm looking forward to seeing that shit. That's just cool as fuck. Um all right. Well, so I wanted to touch on something. Before we actually got into the the you know last night's card, the, the pay per view card, um, it's just kind of the, the the tabloid version of this show. <laughs> this show is the dumbass rules for um, for Jake Paul and Mike Tyson. Did you did you see this shit? Like they basically went into whatever rule set that they're gonna do. I'm gonna pull it up here on my phone momentarily, but basically. You know, it's not going to be an actual fight fight, which we kind of already knew, right? We knew it wasn't going to be that. But as I'm pulling it up here, 16-ounce um, gloves, all right, which is basically sparring sessions for, for you know, us groans, um, not 10-ounce, two-minute rounds, like chick fights, not not three-minute rounds, okay? Um, Can you say woman? <laughs> oh, sorry. Women, women, female, women fighting, women boxing. <laughs> It's it's two minutes. It's it's like chick to... fights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as opposed to dudes. But all right, women's women's boxing is they do two minute rounds as opposed to three, and these guys are gonna do two minute rounds. Okay, fair enough. Uh, no official judges will score the fight, so we're not gonna have an actual winner unless there is some sort of knockout or something like that, which I'm not sure if that's gonna happen anyway. But it doesn't seem like either of them is going to be holding back, so there's a potential of a knockout, although I don't even think that's going to happen either. But nonetheless, there's going to be no winner unless there's some sort of knockout. And uh, the fighters must pass an EEG and EKG prior to it. So these are, I'm, I'm semi-familiar with some of these, you know, uh, initials, but I'm sure there's some sort of like CAT scans or something like that, both in their brain and their body, to make sure that they're okay prior to the fight. Um, so those are... What are the rules? Um, I don't know. I mean, th this is an obvious cash grab. I think we kind of already established that. Um, I, I didn't think Tyson was in the, um, you know, um, in the position to be accepting fights like this. I hope he's going to be handsomely compensated. We have to assume he will be. But it certainly, I wouldn't have thought that Tyson is in the position to be accepting fights like this. I didn't think he needed to. I don't know if it's something that he wants to do, but I don't know what 
Jake Paul gets out of this. I don't know what when he gets out of this or how this in any way, shape or form helps his case or his cause in the sport of boxing in general. But so far, those are going to be the rules. Uh, what do you think of these these whack ass fucking rules, Andrew? I didn't like the fight before. I still don't like the fight today. The rules didn't change it. Um, almost confirms our, you know, everybody's thoughts on it, that it was just a money thing. This is not real. And it's not real. Um, I don't even see really... A knockout is going to come because Mike Tyson accidentally fucking hits him. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? My dad was thinking the same thing. He's like, he's going to accidentally unload a fucking hard-ass right uppercut or something and crack yeah. his nose. So that he's going to anyway, yeah. deliver a punch that he tells him, I thought you could take that. You know, it'd be something like that. Like, my bad. And he, you'll see Mike totally, like, ask for forgiveness probably on the camera, too. Mm-hmm. I didn't mean to do it. He's going to tell us it was a fixed fight. <laughs> like, it was an accident. I, I wasn't supposed to do that. Like, I loved it when he told Roy that after their fight. He was like, hey, you took a good punch. Don't let them die. Don't, don't let anyone tell you different. You still took that punch. I was like, oh, Mike. Mm-hmm. Basically, talking about their brain damage and shit bro uh but whatever um i'm done giving mike money i've given him all my money that i that i you know he's made he's made way more millions than he should have in this sport i'm done i'm not i wasn't in when they signed i'm not in after these stupid ass rules um two minute round 16 ounce gloves headgear you know jake it was everything but your brother his name's jake paul right yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, his brother right, is Logan. Good. As long as I got that. It's everything that the rumors were except your brother getting tapped in. So you came out fucking crucifying <laughs> everybody that was talking about how this was going to be a bullshit fight. And it is a bullshit fight. You just can't tap your brother in. So be it. Um, It does nothing for his argument against a professional fighter. This is you're not fighting in a professional bout. You're not fighting with in with the inside the rules of a professional bout. So I don't give a shit if you if you land a few punches on Mike and try to take that as some win. How you know you landed on you know there's no argument for Canelo. It's actually a step back. It's not even a step forward for Jake. Hopefully right, he right. Makes- I'm saying it's like it, it's a great payday, great, but that doesn't exactly help his cause on some potential future Canelo fight. I come the fuck on. And, and that hasn't happened yet. We haven't seen the great payday because yeah. really the the stories were never good about Triller, Mike Tyson in that Roy Jones fight. Right. You know, we think they got paid. Don't really know. It, it seemed like, you know, Triller went bankrupt or something at the end. Like, who knows how that ended for Mike? Um I'm sure they had some kind of money that was guaranteed in a fucking bank account saying, no, if everything else fails, Mike, you're still going to get 250000 but it's not the $50 million that they were saying he was going to make, right? It's only, a, it's only a little amount they put away in a, in a what is it, escrow account? I think they, they put these in. Um, so, so I don't know if he's going to make a lot of money. There's not a lot of talk about it. And these rules aren't changed. Dude, these rules make you look full, foolish in the MMA world. The, the mm. MMA guy should be making fun of Jake. He's, oh, you know, he likes fucking making fun of them. Well, they should be laughing at this one now too. So it doesn't even, it doesn't even help him there. So I don't see their fan base buying into this fight. He's really going off of Mike Tyson's star power. Will the diehard Tyson fans buy this fight to, to watch him maybe knock out Jake Paula of uh, uh, obnoxious YouTuber, right? Mike told us 20 years ago he had no love for the game. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that comes back. Um, so I'm gonna say no. That this is a show for Mike. This is a this is another Broadway show. This is another TV show. This is another podcast. He's done a lot of these. He he he, he acts a lot in these older days. Mm-hmm. Does movies shit. So. I'm not buying it. No. As of right now, I don't even know how many rounds they're going to go. Like, will they be able to go, you know, 10 or 8 or what the heck the, the, the decision is there? Because I haven't seen anything about that yet. Because they're certainly not going to go 12. Well, actually, maybe 
with two minute rounds, maybe they will. I don't know, but I haven't even seen that exactly. Um, or like uh, what? Um, I bet it's as, only eight. I bet you it's only eight rounds. Yeah, probably. And I don't know, like even what, uh, like what streaming service is gonna is it gonna be on fucking Netflix or some shit? Like I don't know where it's gonna. No, be on. yeah, they did say that. Oh, yeah. is it okay? Okay. Yeah, that's already been announced. Yeah, it was like they're starting to, you know, Prime did it last night, and yeah, then Netflix, yeah. I think, well, announced. Netflix, I think they're going to start having wrestling. They're going to have WWE on, on fucking Netflix now. So yeah. that's going to be that thing. You know, they're going to have to hop over to that. Because as of right now, so so I have the, the Peacock app. I pay a subscription to that because I like watching the video library of, you know, the old school WWF events and stuff like that because I was a big fan as a kid. So I have it for that mainly. I don't know if I'm going to have to switch over. I already have actually Netflix because I have some t-mobile package that they give you like free netflix so like all right take it i'll take it sure no problem i rarely watch it though i like to watch it more so for like um documentaries and shit like that but i rarely use it i use peacock more than anything else i use obviously the other ones espn plus uh the zone stuff like that um and whatnot but uh, i don't really use i'm probably gonna have to switch over to like you know uh, netflix which i mentioned i already have and get rid of peacock if they're not gonna have the wwe stuff on there anymore but yeah they're gonna have wwe on netflix now so um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of these guys. Uh, did, did they say was it Netflix or what was it? Or was it the zone or what are they going to be on? Do you know the the Tyson fight? And it, Netflix, it's streaming okay, okay. on Netflix. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so that's going to be it's going to be whack. But when I saw that pop up, I was like, what the fuck, really? Like this this is. I I didn't think Tyson was in that position to to go that route, but um, yeah, I wanted to touch on that real quick just because that's like really really more so the. The main news that came out this week there was so much hype around the um sue and fundora card that uh, we will get into now but there was so much hype behind that that you know everything else every other news anything else that popped up during the week wasn't really worthy of of news really so um so yeah so uh, uh if you guys uh, tuned in to our uh, you know when whenever you guys tune into our show uh, I posted on the our YouTube channel the Grand Arrivals. Uh, these guys normally they come in on Tuesdays. That's usually how it is, at least for Canelo fights. Um, but this time they did it on a Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday was the Grand Arrival for the um, the card, the the, the uh, PBC on Prime Video. Um, Tim Zhu and Sebastian Fundorum, and then uh, Rolly Romero and Pitbull Cruz. Uh, it was pretty tight. They actually they done this before. At the MGM Grand here in Las Vegas, uh, between this really cool restaurant called Tap, which I ate there afterwards while I was editing my video, and then between that and uh, the sports book, they set up this like makeshift um, ring. And these there's like a, a second floor uh, near the sports book. Uh, they would come down from there. That's their little grand arrival. They'll go into the ring, have a little mini interview. They will like hit the pads if that's what they feel like doing, and then they'll book it. And then as they walk away, they'll sign autographs or whatever the fuck. That's kind of the the uh, grand arrival, which happened on Wednesday. Thursday was the final press conference. Friday was the uh, weigh-in, and then Saturday night, last night, was the fight. So uh, if you guys haven't checked it out yet, by all means do so. Uh, there wasn't that many people there for the grand arrival, which I kind of liked because that means I got to be, be pretty close. Uh, by all means, check out the video that I posted. It's about 40, a little under 40 minutes long. Um, but I posted it on the, our YouTube channel, uh, The Grand Arrivals. Uh, it was primarily the co-main event and the main event that the guys were there. Um, I want to say they had uh, Martinez and his opponent. Um, that was They were in the ring as well. That was a fun fight on the pay-per-view card. But they also did their little Grand Arrival, and that was kind of cool. Uh, but, you know, I got to see everybody. Oh, and then also um, uh, Laura and... Uh, and um, uh, Zarafa, uh, they were uh, they were there as well. It was pretty cool. I sent a couple of videos to our homie Sam Navajero uh, of you know like Safar that did, didn't um, Zarafa Zarafa um, didn't uh, didn't turn out very well for him. You know, well again that's part of the undercard bout. You know the undercard stuff. The ones that we want to focus on are the the co-main event and the main event. Um, so uh, we will start <laughs> we will start with that with that co-main event. First and foremost, um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you get get a first hand of this one here, uh, Andrew. Uh, what did you think of Roly and Pitbull? Well, um, I think we had talked about Roly's position in the sport going into this fight. He didn't know if he was a real champion. Probably took a defeat to a guy that looked like well, he described as being his grandfather's age. Um, was kind of given this belt. So he could set up Ryan Garcia was your prediction of, of who was supposed to mm -hmm. take this belt mm -hmm. off of him. It was always supposed to happen. Whoever was going to get him first 
right? Mm-hmm. We predicted all of that. <laughs> and right, I'm sure, right. and I know a lot of people did. Sure, but sure. last night, uh, I think Pitbull did it easier than I even expected. Mm. It was pretty easy. It wasn't a fight, bro. Um, you know, the fact that, that he, Raleigh Romero w- w- got that title the way he did, he should have had to rematch that grandpa, right? Mm-hmm. We got to watch, and I'm going to talk about this again, but yeah, that belt was a, was a give me belt. Um, that's exactly what t- props to Manny Pacquiao to, for getting uh, Pitbull into that position to get that title off of him with no guarantee from the PBC that he gets Tank. It mm-hmm. looks like Tank don't want the fight, right? And the PBC allowed him to take a title with, and, and now, you know, with Manny being his uh, promoter. Um, so props out for Manny for getting that for for Cruz there, um, but it, exciting as shit, dude. Look, the guy's a star. He might not have the best. He technically might not be the best in the ring, but but he was the main event last night. Can we mm-hmm. agree? That crowd was there to see him. The only text messages I got was about the Cruz fight. So mm-hmm. I mean, he's he's here. He's had a very good um, division. Unfortunately, that division holds some very badass technical fighters. And if I break down the fight, Cruz was walking into punches. I mean, you guys, let's not, you know, we can't hide behind his flaws or, or hide from them. The dude walks into a lot. He has no fucking jab. He's all hooks, all... Just power, heart, determination. I get all that. But when you're talking about the Devin Haney's and the Telefimo Lopez's, right? These guys are technically sound. They set you up. They counter. Beautiful counter punchers in that division with those two champs. So he, he's he got an uphill battle from here. He's definitely no Raleigh Romero, though. The WBA title is now in the hands of a legit fighter who's trying to you know to do things in this sport raleigh what you showed us was you're all show bro you're no fight you got no dog in you you know you brought the, you brought the cho- the dog that represents you that's that fucking <laughs> yeah right i'm dead so, you know that's what it looked like last night mm. just being honest um pit bull looked like a pit bull i loved his interview don't fucking piss off a pit bull you damn right he was gunning for that boy's head, and the crowd was loving it. I Jr. was loving it. Like, nah, man, I could see the star grow. You seen I sent you that star right you after, mm-hmm. man, because mm-hmm. that's what it looked like he graduated into. Now it's about matchmaking. Don't throw him in right away with one of the other guys. Let's build him. Get him some, you know, three title defenses maybe. He's young, man. He don't need the shit right away. And I know they they're probably wouldn't. They'd go right into a unification but i would like to see him grow into the junior welterweight division as a fighter let his body grow and try to get him some little more skills man you know a fucking jab (laughs) right so loved everything about it though the right guy won uh raleigh ah did you see de la hoya and hopkins i'll throw it back to you with the yeah Yeah, go ahead yeah. That that said it all right there for Raleigh, man. Yeah, that that really did. Um, you know, as, even though um, you know, even though Raleigh came out on the you know the short end on that particular fight, he was still kind of right in some of his predictions. It's like he comes forward, you you don't have to go searching for him. You, he's yeah. hittable because he, you don't have to find him, right? He wasn't able to pull off the game plan, but regardless, he still is correct in that. Um, as as you mentioned, That's he's, there be, he's there to be hit. Yeah. He still gets hit, you know, and. It's just unfortunate for for Rolly that he wasn't able to actually you know execute the game plan, um, but he he really was he really was the Chihuahua of the card you know it was like and this is kind of a very similar scenario uh, um, uh, with with like Haney and and Ryan really it's like we know Ryan's not the real deal but he talks a fuck ton so Haney's gonna come and whoop his ass and make Haney even more of a star it's kind of what happened here it's like we knew that Pitbull's gonna come in and like handle Rolly uh, I I did not and. I, I don't even remember what my prediction was last week uh, or how far the fight was going to go. But my homie Martin was, uh, you know, texting me and he was like, dude, because he was watching it too. And uh, and I was like, uh, before the fight started, I said, you know, uh, 
Pitbull at eight. And I was like, it'll, it'll go a little bit beyond the, the half point mark. And thankfully, I got around in the money. It was Pitbull and eight. Um, and when he was, when he rocked Rowley in that first round, I was like, God, no, don't finish it. Because, you know, the the fight before with uh, with um, Zarafa yeah. and fucking um, yeah. uh, Lara ended really fast. And I was like, God damn it. You know, and then I knew at the moment, I'm like, I bet you Sam is pissed off right now. I was like, God, dude, we are. You got to say, on <laughs> Easter, you got to say, gosh, darn it. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, darn it! Yes. Shoot! Oh, shoot! There you go. It, it, Come it, it, on, bro. Yeah, right. But both of the both of the Australian fighters ended up losing last night, which which sucked, you know. But uh, that was, you know, we thought there that was going to be a potential fight down the road. It's not going to happen. But anyway, um, I, I'm back to to Rolly and um and fucking Pitbull. Uh, I, it was, you know, I was hoping the fight would go on because of that that Laura fight that ended up uh, uh, uh that ended uh, quicker than I would have liked. And then I was like, man, we're going to get to the main event real fast. That this fight, you know, when, when Rowling gets tagged in that first round, we're like, geez, these guys aren't even barely warming up. You know, they're going to have to kill a lot of time between now and then. There's not going to be a good, you know, that happens sometimes when the early undercard fights end fast. And then we have to kind of kill some time or the broadcasters have to kill some time between that and the main event. And that's happened many times before. I remember as a kid being bored as fuck watching some of these fights. I'm like, damn it, when are they going to get to the main event already because of how much dead time that there is? And uh, thankfully that didn't happen. <laughs> Raleigh was able to, you know, keep his composure for as much as he could and, you know, uh, basically uh, a tie um, uh, pit bull at, to the point where he was doing it so much that the referee had to, like, take a point. You know, it's like he was holding a lot. And this is... I, I kind of like that. I like that because I, I understand, and people say this all the time, how much of a strategy it is for you to, like, you know, um, to tie up your opponent, especially when you have your back up against the rope. So you're in a corner and the opponent comes at you, you know, like juggernauting in and you wrap him up so the referee can break you up. It's like you can only do that so much. You know, at some point yeah. you have to stop doing that shit. And as long as the referees let it happen, the fighter's going to keep doing it. So that and I, I want to go specifically to, to Floyd and Manny. I would have liked for there to be some sort of point deduction. Like, look, dude, you can only hold on so much. You're thinking it's some sort of fucking good strategy. That's not. It's not that great. You know, you're just you're trying to tie him up. The only reason fighters do that is because the referees let them get away with it. It's oh, not. Go watch. Content. Go um, watch Floyd versus Robert Guerrero. Oh yeah, there's a hundred. That's what I'm saying. Over a hundred and fifteen clinches in that bout. Go watch the yeah. replay. It's like He's... when when do the things when do the fucking warnings come in? When do the point deductions? It's like they're only doing it because the wrestlers, you know. And everybody's like, "Oh, you don't know shit about boxing, you know shit." Like, no, it. Look at the rules. They're not supposed to fucking wrestle. What happens when they do get in the tussle? Or the referee splits them up and breaks them up again. Okay, so they're many not clinches. supposed to do it. It's like, God damn it. So you know, Roley was in that position. He was hurt. I can understand. He was trying to backpedal and he was trying to shake off the cobwebs. But it was a point where he looked like he was okay again, and he still kept like grabbing. So I'm I'm glad that the referee finally stepped in and said, "Hey, that's enough point deduction." Uh, I mean, it didn't help his cause. He was already, you know, really he had no like, answer. He had, he had no answer. No answer. So, he I mean, he was a he, deer in he headlights. Had the answer. He had the answer. He just couldn't execute it. He there you go. Execute. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, bro. Yeah, they had the blueprint. They just mm -hmm. didn't know how to execute it in the ring. Totally, because, man, the guy was walking through him, hitting him with combinations. He's literally grabbing for his life. Like, you look so amateur, bro. Seriously. Um, that was an easy belt. That was an easy belt, Raleigh. And you got to take all this because you were trying to hand it all out to him. You know what I mean? During this, you, you just got to eat your words. I don't know how he comes back from this. Um, you know. I really don't see an avenue for Raleigh Romero at this level, at this level. There might be some level in his hometown that he can beat up a bunch of B guys and, you know, hopefully make a few grand for the rest of his life, but uh, not at this elite level because um, you've been knocked out twice and beaten by an old dude who, you know, you're kind of gifted that, that belt. So you're losing at every level in, in boxing when you come to – the top tier. Um, so I, I don't really see an av avenue for him anymore. Um, maybe him and Ryan G Garcia on a YouTube fight, you know, mm -hmm. after Ryan gets his ass handed to him for the final time in boxing, maybe they can go do something on their own little pay-per-view that generate on YouTube. But, um, but no, that's uh, him versus anyone in the 140 division. Come on. is a joke. If they put the fight together.
Um, so yeah, especially no no title holders because uh, that that was what I was going to get into here momentarily is like what what comes next for these guys with the other champions he's not going to get a crack at any one of those belts anytime soon he's going to be probably you know fighting some other he might he might be on the undercard of some you know he won't be the main event or co-main event anytime soon at least I don't think um, but it, it was it was very. It was uh, maybe maybe not as much, but damn near as close, as satisfying as when Marcos Maidana beat um, fucking Adrian Broner. You know, I think that was probably like the top most satisfying victory I think I've ever watched in boxing is when Maidana handed um, uh, Broner his ass to him and took away his belt and took away his undefeated record. So this one was kind of up there. You know, I was willing and I'm like, God damn, I just I, I can't wait for um, for uh, for Raleigh to get his ass beat. For as much as he was talking, and the the thing is, after I was watching the you know the fight, and, and they get interviewed in the ring post fight, and um, uh, the she the, I forgot her name. I think it was uh, it's it's Kayla Plant's uh, wife. I forget her name, but she was interviewing um, Roly after the Jordan fight, right? Plant. Jordan, Jordan. Plant, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, and and she was asking us like like you know kind of kind of putting them on the spot saying like you thought it was gonna be a lot easier. Are you regretting what you're saying oh, yeah. now? Right? Oh, you know, yeah. like and he he was so. He was so out of it. He's just like, and, and I, I, I could almost, it's so, it's so cringe because I could almost see like Jordan Plant, like, are you going to answer the question, motherfucker? What the hell? Right. So it, he comes and he turns around with his like, I uh, just want to wish people a happy Easter, you know, uh, or like uh, answer the question. He did that like, before. He did that with Tank. Remember, he totally checks oh, out of the he? interview oh, with gosh. Tank, too. He no, started talking. Know. to. Yeah, he was acting. He was acting really weird after the Tank fight where they thought. Maybe uh, Tank had gave him a concussion or something like he wasn't there, but he does. He pulls off another one of those acts like he's in a state of shock, doesn't know what happened kind of deal. You know what I mean? Like, nah, bro, you got your ass handed to you. You Don't worry. You'll see the tape. You know, you might not remember now, but you're yeah. going to see the tape. Um Yeah. Uh, he, so, said, he said some stuff like, oh, uh, and just like Jesus resurrection, resurrected, I'll be back. Like, uh, sure, sure, buddy. You know, like, yeah. By all means, yeah, by all means, come back. You're not gonna. Make and he it will this, come. Though. Yeah, I'm sure. And he right. will come back. We just don't. What's the avenue for him? He's an underdog every fight they put him in, right? Sure, right yeah. now, all he beats he is B. Le- he was a champ, and he came into this fight as an underdog, y'all. Yeah, yeah. It's um, no. And then and then you've seen him just get eaten alive on the internet. Whoever had him in the lead don't know nothing about boxing. Yes. Whoever had him a what champion. Oh, oh my god! There was like a li- yeah, it was it was bad for Raleigh last night. But like I said, if you dish it, you got to take it, right? And yeah, he definitely likes to. He's all he's a showman. He right now he's a showman, and he will get on a fight card because he can sell that ticket. The problem is Romero, you can't get your fucking ass handed like that because then no one's even gonna buy your show. I'm not buying your show anymore, but I know somebody that out there will. So they'll PBC will definitely try to run this guy back onto a card. He needs to tighten up his boxing. You you got to get a win. You got to look, you know, like you can compete with the best. Last night did not look like you can compete with the best. You did catch him a few times, and that's something that I don't even know if if Cruz will ever work on that. Cruz might be who he is. Uh, hopefully they try, you know, they because he's not even Barrera. And, you know, Cruz is his own different animal, man. So if the dude wants, you know, it's definitely a style that's not going to be here for a long time, right? Sure. His body might be in the ring, <laughs> but that peak, m- this peak moment for him is not, you know, that ain't going to be with them forever, man. They, this guy is all fucking heart training determination there's not a lot of skill there his hooks are fucking wild you know he's crazy he's like one of those dudes you're like what the hell's happening right now but he's not stopping and there's yeah. really nothing you can do about it you got to step back and try to time it man is basically you know uh it all you can ask for and unfortunately timing is something that haney <laughs> and lopez possess a lot of yeah. it's it, even lopez bro you see that one video Lopez put out where he blocked Josh Taylor like three times with one glove and then counters him? No, it, no. It's a thing of beauty, bro. It's shit that they do that you don't see. You know what I mean? But like, bang, bang. Like, he blocks it three times and then counters. Same man. Josh Taylor's all fucking hurt one hand. <laughs> Damn. 
that, that rings a bell. I want to say I might have already seen it. Yeah, because yeah, I, he just done it too many times in that fight, but he did it that particular time. Um, I'm gonna look that up. I, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, was, that's what he's facing when he when he. You know what I mean? That's what he's yeah. got. He has to work on a little bit more. But but uh, no, I was very happy, very happy with the with the way he handed it to fucking uh, uh, Romero last night. Romero kind of had that coming. Kind of had that coming for not even acknowledging the old man on how good he did, too, right? He tried to kind of, oh, yeah, what are you guys talking about? I blew that guy. I beat that guy. I was like, oh, my God. And this kid, this kid's full of himself. And then the, the way he promoted this fight, he got humbled. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah he got exactly. Humbled. Yeah, I mean, we saw him get humbled. Rather not in his, <laughs> in his mind, he's, he's humble or not is another story. Um, but uh, that definitely leaves... Uh, I, you know, you, you mentioned Pitbull Cruz has quite the hill to climb if he's going to fight some of the other guys because, you know, everybody else is going to have a jab. Everyone else is going to be able to execute what uh, Roley wasn't able to, uh, at least the, the elite guys at 140. Um, there, you know, there's that, the Matias dude who everybody wants, uh, who is trying to avoid, supposedly. That is going to be a freaking barn burner if that ever happens. It might be too soon for that, though. I want to say maybe give uh, Cruz a title defense or something like that prior to yeah. uh, even attempting. But... He's in a position now. He, now he's a, he he got the belt from Roley, so now it's like, all right, now I am in a position to go after some of these fights. He has a lot of leverage now and bargaining power. Um, you know, he's he like you said, it's not like going to be like a style that he's gonna it's gonna be around forever. He wings his punches a lot. I I have to assume it's because of his height. You know, that's the only way he can fucking reach some of these guys is if he just these uh, these wide punches, uh, like overhand kind of like right hands, right and. I would have liked to have seen gone to the body a little bit more. Um, you know, Roly was backpedaling for the majority of the fight. One of the ways you can get somebody to stop backpedaling is to start cracking them to the belly and start hitting them in the ribs and slowing them down. You know, cutting off the ring a little bit. Um, he did a pretty decent job. I think it was more so him hurting uh, Roly that caused Roly to stop, uh, so he can get you know become a stationary target for Cruz and not so much Cruz's technical uh, ability to cut off the ring or like go to the body to slow him down. He didn't do that much. Um, I would have liked to have seen at least a little bit more of that from Cruz. Um, whether or not that can be changed or that can be added to his repertoire at this point of his career, I don't know. He's a young guy. He's 25, so he's got plenty to learn. But, you know, I, I don't know if he's he's in that – if he's the kind of person that would, you know, hook onto that or, or like, that will latch onto those new skills as they're being taught to him. But he's in a position to make himself a lot of fucking money. And B, you know, if, even in, in losing and giving up the belts, we saw how it was against um, against Gervonta. If he puts on a p performance like that, even in losing, his stock still rises. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if he, they put him up against... Oh, uh, um, he's in a good position to, to maybe try to do a card as him as the main event. What the PBC oh, needs, yeah. what the PBC needs to find is a dance partner, right? That doesn't have to be another title holder. Um, real fast, me top. I didn't think about this until right now. It would be like, what about an Adrian Broner for an Amazon card, dude? What do you think on something like that? Uh, at one forty. At one forty. You, you think you can still make one forty? Uh, well, that's what he was planning on coming back to right i thought ab was talking about fighting um um haney at 140 i thought he was talking about did wasn't he all well, um, having their little yeah I, well i i read that he was gonna fight somebody like already I, I, somebody i think oh but i'm not sure it's gonna be 140 maybe it is i don't remember but he I, that's understandable if he says he wanted to come back for somebody like haney but would he come back to some to 140 for someone like pitbull if the Amazon card does good, right? These guys are all getting raises because it's not guaranteed, right? So hopefully Al Heyman's kind of uh, giving them a bigger payday. You just got to make it. It's not a guarantee you get this payday, but if you do, I'll give you this amount if you guys can hit this mark. Yeah. So AB is in no point. That would be like a lotto for him. Right? Because then if he can sell this fight, which we all know Adrian Broner can sell a fight, all of a sudden, hey, we could bring up that Mexicans, anyone can get it, right? Remember mm -hmm. those comments? Start recycling those. It, they have to find an opponent that, that he's learning off of yet can sell a pay-per-view. That's the first name that came to me. Mm -hmm. um, but it's got to be a PBC-connected guy. And it, you know, and it can't be one of the top three, in my opinion. 
Um, so that's what they're looking. But I think, dude, that crowd was big last night. Hats off mm-hmm. to the PBC. They got yeah. some fans in there. <clears throat> when fucking Cruz walked out, I think he instantly knew who those fans <laughs> were there to see. Yeah. He looked. So now, and because... I don't know if the Mexican Americans have bought into the women's boxing side yet, but we know that they bought into the men's, right? So you yeah. can take this fight to an LA or to a Dallas. You mm-hmm. could take Cruz there. It's possible he can sell an arena. Um, so if I'm the PBC, I'm going to tr- test the waters with him as a main event, put Julio Cesar Martinez back on the undercard that's a great card if they can get martinez with the dance partner that dude is nothing but action we got it i'll just talk about it briefly he's nothing but action it was a great fight last night i had a unanimous decision i don't know what that whole majority was about excuse me to me miguel martinez pulled so far ahead in the first fucking five rounds six rounds how could this be a majority at the end but you know I'm, it's whatever he, he won the fight the right guy won i just didn't like the scorecard either way every time i watch julio says to martinez it's an exciting fucking fight i mean he's telling the guy come on he's hitting his chin he throws nothing but power right him and cruz on the same car he, again on the same car these guys are fucking face forward Fighters, man, they're coming for it. Um, so if I'm Al, I'm, I'm definitely trying to, to trying to test the waters to see if I could get Cruz into a, a a potential star for them where they don't have to rush him in because I don't think he's ready for Haney or, or Low. I'll just put it out there. I don't think he's ready. What, what about uh, like let's say who who, who um, um, Tofimo just beat um, Josh Ortiz? Taylor? No, 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 no. Tof- oh, Jaime Ortiz. Jaime Ortiz. Jermaine, Jermaine, Jermaine uh, T- J- Jr., like, he gave, uh, I mean, I, know, I don't think he won the fight by any stretch of imagination, but he made the fight difficult for Telfimo. Would that be too much of a test for, let's say, Cruz? Not too much of a test, but I don't think the market's there for Amazon. You got to oh, remember, okay. these guys have to generate their own ticket sales now. It's There is no, don't worry about it, the casino gave us $10 million. You guys are fighting over in Vegas. We don't, It seems like we're not getting that anymore, right? Who owns the T-Mobile? I mean, are they getting purses to go to the T-Mobile? Or are we, or is the boxing world or whoever fights there renting the T-Mobile? That's a big difference from when you used to fight at the MGM. And I'm sorry, if it was me, I don't give a shit about the T-Mobile if the MGM is offering me money to fight in their casino. Mm-hmm. I would fight at the MGM. I don't care if it minimizes my ticket sales because T-Mobile's bigger, right? Yeah. I'm getting a guaranteed purse. I don't know how that works. I haven't asked all those questions over there about how the arrangement is at the T-Mobile. Um, but but uh, if I – if I they don't have that. They have to generate their ticket sale. It seems like because, yeah. once again, Leonard LRB, Al Heyman, nobody has come out and said that what Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins put out there was bullshit. This is not a guaranteed – uh, this is not a no guarantee contract. They never said that, so I'm yeah. sticking with that. It's the only guaranteed shit. Um, you got to find a dance partner could sell a ticket. I don't know if if or, or the Hortiz kid can do that. I don't even know if the fight was that good to put him on the map like that. Right? If they were even to announce that fight immediately after the Lopez uh, uh, fight, if that would have been that hot to put it on a pay per view type platform. I mean. No, I think Cruz still needs a dance partner. Let's give him a small dance partner, um, and 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 if it if it goes good, then you know, then they see where you move on. But I, Ortiz would be to me that's a that's a network fight that that would be a a Friday night fight. Sorry, Ortiz. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I but that's what. And I he was on like... Thursday night, so I gave him one oh. day. What the <laughs> fuck, Miguel? <laughs> did him a favor by giving him that next week. <laughs> um, but like I thought because I figured you know it's maybe maybe not like a pay-per-view type of fight obviously but I thought like one of those kind of things you know put put Martinez on the other card you know as a co-main event or something like that and then put it on and it doesn't have to be pay-per-view because I know that's kind of the direction that that it seems that low as though um that PBC is going with um with this Amazon deal but like 
not every fight is going to be a pay per view. You know, you're going to have to have just these regular fights on regular fucking Amazon Prime Video where you're not paying. You know, every fight they announced though has been on pay per view. Well, yeah, that's insane. But if they can get, <laughs> if they can get something like. Cruz and some other non-title holder with like Martinez on dinner card that would be like a solid you know boxing after dark type of thing you know what I'm saying like it'd be one of those kind of things so I wouldn't mind seeing that it just it won't be on pay-per-view um later on down the line maybe we'll get you know uh Cruz with another champion and that will be on pay-per-view uh, that's that's worthy um but yeah that that uh, he literally and he literally lost uh Deontay seems like Deontay is only fighting for Saudi Arabia now but well oh yeah huh but that you don't think there's a, he's still connected to PBC to some degree to be like oh well I'm sure Al Heyman gets a piece of the check but yeah. P um but he doesn't get him on his Amazon pay per views you know what this is like his third fight I think and gonna be Zhang won't that be Wilder's yeah. third time over there he fought uh, Parker yeah, he, fought, he fought Parker over there but I don't know who, who was he didn't fight the white he didn't fight the the white guy the Viking what was that dude's name that he, he Helenius Helenius no Helenius I don't. Oh shit! Was it over there? I'm gonna have to look it up. I don't. I don't remember it being over there. I don't think so. I, I'm. I thought he was. All right, well, this is his second fight okay. under Saudi. Yeah. And yeah. he lost the first time. I don't know how many people have him beating Zhang. I have him as an underdog. Yeah. So even if he was to come back, let's just say with the two defeats, I don't know how big his market is with with the PBC at that point, right? Yeah. His pay per view market. Um, so I thought that was, that was weird, but they, they lost him. But no, it seems like, especially with the main event, you thought if, it, you know, that fight was never a main event card. If they were going to have some kind of PB, a PBC, Amazon Prime, just regular thing, that this would have opened that up. Um, it was kind of a weird opening night signing and a weird opening fight, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it sure definitely was. Um, uh, hopefully, we get to see these guys back in the ring, or, or Cruz in particular, very, very soon. One of the things that um, that uh, uh, Steve Kim talks about regularly is the inactivity of some of these fighters. Uh, Cruz doesn't seem like that kind of person, so we like to assume that he's going to be back in the ring shortly, maybe like was, we're in uh, late March, so maybe, I don't know, at least one more time before the end of the year, but hopefully two more times before the end of the year. Um, maybe maybe I'm asking for too much, but activity is a big deal, so hopefully he gets to do that. Um, so great win by Cruz, definitely, uh, you know, offered uh, Rolly some humble pie. And again, it was one of those time, one of those things that it was so satisfying for, for us to fucking watch. We were just every punch that Cruz was swinging, we're like, ah, that's the one, that's the one, that's the one. And he, you know, he, he kept missing a few times, but ultimately he got him out of there. Uh, and, you know, Props to, uh, as much as we can, to Roley. He never, I mean, I, he wasn't actually knocked down, right? It was just like he was on his feet, like flopping around and stuff. And when the referee finally stopped it, uh, one of the times he did go into the ropes, and I thought that would have been considered a knockdown, but it yeah. looks like it never was. Yeah, I agree. Uh, not that it needed it necessarily, but uh, I mean, maybe taking a knee would have done him a fucking favor, you know? Maybe at least just taking a quick little eight count or something like that, but that never crossed his mind, apparently. And uh, when the referee stepped in, he was flopping all over the place. So it was a good stoppage, of course, and he was on his feet. He stayed on his feet the whole time. Uh, you know, props to him for taking the ass whooping. It's just a matter of him, like, accepting the ass whooping like he should be, right? Being like, all right, yeah, this was, yeah, this was. Uh, I feel. The, the, uh-huh. I feel like he's one of those girls that that act like if they don't remember, it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, Miguel. Sorry. It's, it's like the quicker we move on to this, the quicker we just forget about it and happen. They're going to ask him, be like, oh, so how you know, how you feel after that knockout? I'm like, what, what knockout? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, never mind. Never mind. I'm talking about Christ over here. But uh, that leads us to our main event of last night, uh, Sebastian Fundora. Uh, well, I guess we should name Tim, Tim Zoo first. Tim Zoo taking on Sebastian Fudora. Um, Tim was defending his WBO title uh, against uh, Fundora, and there was a vacant uh, WBC title on the line as well at 154 pounds. Um, when the fight was originally signed, of course, it was supposed to be Tim Zoo and uh, Keith Thurman. That didn't happen. Keith Thurman injured his arm, so he was out. Boom, they bring in Fundora. Fundora, which, if I'm not mistaken, was going to fight on this card anyway. <clears throat> and they bump him up to the main event. So he was ready to go within that same evening. He said, fuck it, let's do it. And boom, there's a WBC title on the line as well. Two belts 
he went from going to, you know, his comeback fight after getting knocked out by Brian Mendoza, losing his interim belt or the silver belt. I forgot which belt it was that he had at the time. Losing that, losing his undefeated record, this being a comeback fight, and then bam, from that he gets, you know, uh, pushed into the main event spot. Uh, you know, he did accept the fight, so props to him. On two weeks' notice, or 12, 12 days, a little under two weeks' notice, if I'm not mistaken. And we get ourselves quite the fucking bloodbath. Um, when I was watching the fight for a quick second, I was like, Watch Amazon Prime. People are gonna be like, "Is this what we got?" Like, no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna have this barbaric animal shit. You know, like I thought, I saw that and I was like, you know what? Because there's a, there's a story. I don't know if you've ever heard the story going back to um, UFC one back in 1993. People didn't know what to expect. We didn't know what kind of fight was gonna happen. They didn't know what the fuck was gonna happen. And they had sponsors or potential sponsors from Gold's Gym, representatives from Gold's Gym that could potentially sponsor the UFC and have you know be a big big partnership. The first fight happens, one dude gets kicked, a fucking tooth goes flying out, they're like, fuck this, we ain't doing this. So they immediately bounce and they're like, we're not doing, we're not touching this shit, this is, fuck no. So, it's kind of funny, you know, a little, now, you know, 30 years later, where Amazon Prime seeing this, <laughs> this main event on their card, and it's a damn bloodbath, I hope that didn't change their mind in any way, stage, stretch of any stretch of the imagination uh, to, for, you know, continuing with this partnership with, uh, with BBC, but... Bottom line, Sebastian Fondora comes away with the victory. Uh, I believe it was a split decision victory, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, some of the scorecards were a little kind of all over the place, but um, he ended up coming away with the win. Rightfully so, I have to say. I think he did actually win. Our, we were all aiming, or I'm saying all, but you know, we knew who the favorite was, and that was Tim Zhu. So we all expected him to come away with the victory. Of course, circumstances being what they were, uh, at, he right off the bat. You can see right off the bat he had he was landing shots relatively easily, I might add, on Fundora. Fundora's head was snapping back. He was for a quick second, I was like, you know what, Fundora, after that knockout, this might have been a bad choice. Cause it is it's gonna be it's gonna be bad for him. I thought, you know, especially after that first round of him getting hit. I was like, I'm not sure if his brain is there yet. I, I, he needs to wake up or something. And then at the end of the second round, the cut on on uh, on uh, Tim Zoo happens. Fundora's nose is fucking gushing at this point. Like, it's bleeding so much, it looks like his nose is broken, basically. It's not just a regular bloody nose, but it looks bad. So I'm like, oh, this is not looking good for Fundora. And then the accidental elbow to the scalp, um, which didn't, I, I truthfully, didn't look that hard because of the direction that um, that the Tim was coming in. It almost looked like he hit the forearm, but apparently hit, hit the elbow. And... Fundora is a tall, lanky dude, so it's not a lot of meat on him. So, I mean, you know, those damn pointy-ass, sharp elbows, I'm sure, did something. And, and that ultimately opened up the, the scalp. Um, that definitely impaired the fight, impaired his vision, um, Tim Zhu's vision, and absolutely changed the direction. What are you talking about? I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what are you talking about? The direction of the what fight are, I don't know what this means, Miguel. This must mean I'm seeing fine. <laughs> right. Fuck Tars. So, uh, so, uh, and, and the fight, I'm sorry, the, the cut happened at the end of the second round. So at that point, if the fight were to have been stopped, it would have been basically a no contest or no decision because four rounds were not completed. Anytime after that, if the fight would be stopped, they would go to the scorecards because it's an accidental punch, accidental elbow. Um, had the cut been due to a punch, it would have been a TKO automatic win for uh, Sebastian Fundora. But the referee saw it, and the referee immediately saw it uh, that it was a, a cut due through an accidental elbow and immediately called it as such. So props to the referee for seeing that at least and saying, okay, it was no punch, it wasn't a head, but it was a, you know, an elbow. In the event the fight would have been stopped, they would have most likely gone to the scorecards past the fourth round, if not a no, no contest. So uh, before I get into my spiel, uh, please, Andrew, by all means, sound off. I know. There will be no props given by me to the <laughs> team of Tim Zhu this morning. They all failed him. Mm. Look, we all knew Tim Zhu was a favorite going into the fight. But they went from like a 5'9-ish, 5'10-ish right-handed fighter to a 6'5 southpaw in 12 days. Mm. That was probably red flag number one that they, they were a little bit amateur on what they were doing for Tim Zhu's corner. Then the fight happened. He gets cut. Your cut man has no idea what he's doing. 
he can't stop the blood. You're a champion. You're an undefeated champion running a country right now or is about to be. He doesn't have all the ointments and the glues and the fucking Vaselines. I would have had everything in the bucket because you have the money to buy it all. So why didn't you have it all? And why don't you know how to apply it? So he failed me. And then you got to look at your fucking trainer. And I know it's your uncle. And I, I'm cussing because I cuss. And you, you don't, you know, this is Tim Zoo's uncle. So there's family there. There's a blood there. But he failed him, man. You don't hide a cut of that significance from the from the ref. And I felt that's what he was doing in that end of round two. He had the towel over it and he's barely lifting it. No, dude. Wipe the cut and show the ref and the doctor how deep it is. Because it's getting in your guy's eye. And right now, it's a fucking no contest and everyone goes home. What the fuck, man? You, it was that important for you to beat fucking Fandura? You were in no unification match. There was no fucking this. It's either tonight or never. I'm not mad at Fandura. I got nothing. To, hey, great win for him. Because you know what? He had the broken nose, man. So his breathing isn't right. You're not seeing. He's not breathing. Match on. Let's go. He worked through it, too. So I got no sure. beef with him. You did your thing, young man. You got your titles. That's great. My beef is with the fucking commission, with the fucking corner of Tim Zoo, and with fucking Al Heyman. You can't make that call? You can't call in on round two and go, hey, you assholes, what the fuck's the doctor doing? Stop this fight. You don't win on accidents. I don't like it. Because you were nowhere near winning when the guy wasn't cut by your accidental fucking elbow to his head. You were nowhere near winning. Sorry. Matter of fact, in round that beginning of round two, he lands like five right hands with you having absolutely no defense for it. You weren't even it wasn't close before the elbow, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I know I only got like five minutes. But that's yeah. Zoo that's was not, winning this fight exactly, and I thought it was going to be a short night. I thought it was going to be a short night. I thought he was he was landing these shots all right on Fundora. I'm like, fuck, Fundora was not ready for this, you know. After that knockout, and then and then that happened, and it completely changed the course of the fight. But anyway, go hey ahead. doc, hey doctor, I don't think you should be a ringside physician anymore. When a when a champion <laughs> is doing that, hey, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> Four right. fucking times he does it in front of his face. And these assholes are like, oh, yeah, let's go on with that. Dude, it looked fixed. Dude, it looked like Raleigh Romero and the grandpa all over again. We get the belt to Fondura because the call could have been made. Yeah. We're, in the, we're in a world where there's these things called cell phones. And before cell phones, they had hard lines. We all know they had a fucking... Telephone right there at the commissioner's desk. The calls could be made. If that was really your star, if he was really the guy you wanted the future to get into, you're making him fight 10 rounds with one eye? Bullshit. Well, let, let, me, let, me, let, me prop, let me propose this to you, uh, Andrew. Let's say, let's say Al Heyman is on the phone, right? He's like, hey, don't you stop the fucking fight. There's no way my main event ends you know, my first card on pay-per-view, you know, PBC, uh, Amazon Prime. There's no way my fucking main event on my first card ends on a no contest. You don't stop that fucking fight. Doesn't Please. matter. He's not the star then. Because anyone who's there to see the star knows that the star, that was a bullshit situation he got put into. That shit, shit, bro, he can't see in round three. Yeah. This yeah. guy is literally fucking doing this. <laughs> Even, I, it's like, I can imagine the referee, like, quit wiping the blood. I can't see. It's getting on me. Can you see? Yeah, exactly, oh, bro. Like, at no point you felt like saying, okay, you know what? He can't see. I got to take this out of the fighter's hands. You know that thing called protecting the fighter? I don't know. Am I being a pussy this morning? But you know that little thing in boxing about protecting the fighter? The trainer's supposed to protect the fighter. The commission's supposed to protect the fighter. The referee's supposed to protect the fighter. We got the champ who can't stop. It's like his eye was fucking irritated, you guys. What, did you think he had something in his eye? It was called blood. Yeah, uh, his own blood dripping from it every time. What the fuck? And, and I noticed um, this as well. 
the second he comes out of the ring of the, the corner, Sue, it's already pouring. It's yes! like, I'm like, what the fuck? How, Bro, like, he how, starts the round, you? I think, like this. Yeah. And I don't even know. I don't even know if they wipe the glove, uh, the the of blood of the previous Thank fucking round. So he's trying to wipe the new blood that's arriving with the old blood, and he's just doing this. Um, so I, I, I've watched bits and pieces. I've watched bits and pieces of the um, the press fight, uh, the press conference. After that. I haven't watched the whole thing, but a guy, I think a, a fellow countryman, an Australian, asks Tim Zhu, says, "Hey, the American commentators on the, the you know the PBC guys were saying that the guy in your corner, that your cut man, your corner man, right, uh, didn't have the right ointment to get that fucking stead under control. It's like, yeah. were you happy with that? You know, were you happy with the way they handled it?" Tim Zhu says, "No comment." He fucking straight up says, good. "No comment," and yeah. then he's like. Oh shit! There's gonna be some fucking someone getting that fired, shit. man. Someone's getting fucking fired, and that's and, and again, you know, it, it, Tim doesn't want to quit. He th- obviously doesn't want to quit. He doesn't want to fighter. Fight. He's a fighter. So there's where you step in. It's like, dude, that's a bad cut. This is not going in. in a, or at the very least, at the very least, give him a couple of rounds. We'll say, like, look, if it or or to to because I mean, there was there was no reason for his corner to try to hide that cut. No, that it was already called an elbow. It wasn't like he was gonna in, in the position to I, lose unless they kept going. Totally agree. So totally it's like agree. at that point, let's say the, the cut happens in the second round, right? Boom. Is it bothering you? Bam. If at the end of or, or somewhere in this third round, and that blood starts to bug you and we can't get that shit to stop, we're calling it before the fourth round. Yes. So we call it no contest. Boom. Where well, everybody keeps their titles, we have a rematch next time, whatever the fuck, right? Furthermore. He was asked several times, Tim Zhu, about exercising the rematch clause because there is one. He never says definitively, yes, I want the rematch. Nobody does. Even fucking, you know, Fundora afterwards, Earl Spence comes into the ring and now we have a potential Spence and Fundora showdown at 154. It's like, is everybody driving away I from... A, uh, you're, I have a reason. Please do so. We have to see how many fights he had with the PBC, Miguel. What if this fight... Listen, there's no guaranteed money in this plot anymore. What if he already had a lucrative deal from top rank, from the zone, from Golden Boy, saying, you know what, why don't you come over here with the guaranteed money? That's... You have to look at why... Why didn't they protect their guy last night? Ask yourself that. The commission don't protect them. The ref don't protect them. Wait, Dude, he's we're talking about me. Sue. We're talking about Sue. Like, yes. Like, so Sue potentially bouncing? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying this potential, yeah, was his last fight with the PBC. That's what I would like to know. What was his deal with the PBC? He's had like three or four fights with these guys, yeah. bro. He's been the whole nobody, time. The time. Yeah. Nobody protected him, and you're absolutely right. What the hell? I'll try not to cuss. Was that girl doing? Oh, come up here, Spence. Here's your next opponent. Why wasn't Al on the phone like, kill the Spence talk. Our guy gets the rematch. Don't ever, don't even yeah. bring Spence up there. But yet, here's Spence, and all of a sudden, we're moving the fuck on. We, she acted like we were moving on. Yes. Yeah, that's what it seemed. And now Spence basically jumps the line. D- didn't Crawford just say that he's going to exercise his right to be the, the number one contender oh, at I... WBO? You know, it's like, uh, so that, that's gone. Because even um, uh, Crawford you himself Crawford has wrote, tweeted. Though. Well, I, I, what I saw that he wrote on Twitter or X, whatever, uh, that, uh, like, you lost, sir. You got to get back to the line. Talking oh. about Sue. Okay, fine, cool. Didn't say shit about Fundora. Didn't no, he, he talked about shit? Spence. Uh, oh, I thought that's he was talking Crawford. about... Uh, no, that's Crawford telling Spence, oh, telling bro. Spence. Got the, yeah, because they had. He was asked. Uh, Sue was asked about Crawford many times. So I thought, okay, he was talking to Crawford. Uh, Crawford was talking to Sue, being like, "Sorry, dude, you're at the picture now. You just fucking lost." So he's talking yeah. about Spence. In my opinion, that was shot well, to well, Spence. Well, like, sense now. what are you talking? You're a big. Oh, the big dogs here now. Get the fuck out of here, big dog, bro. You can't stop a southpaw, and that motherfucker's six five in the southpaw position. Big dog, whatever. We'll see. I, I think that was totally to Spence. Yeah, no, that makes but, more sense now. I was thinking Sue, but no, you're right. But how they did that dude dirty last night? They did Zeus so dirty last night, and his corner 
we're just amateurs. Look, that's his uncle. That's no fucking legendary coach. He has no... I didn't hear anything about all the Australian great fighters that he's brought out. You know what they said? It's Zoo's uncle. And that's what he looked like last night. He looked like Zoo's uncle. And you did not protect your nephew at all. You didn't even have the right fucking cut, man, in the corner to, start to protect him. And what was the plan if the, you ever got a cut? Didn't look like there was a plan B. I see no change, no adjustment. He tried harder, but he didn't change up anything. Um, it sucks for Zoo. It sucks that they made him put him in a position where he said, I need to quit himself. Yeah. Hey, you guys, when I see my guy do this four fucking times after a doctor asked him if he can see, I'm going to know my, his body language is telling me no. And if I'm wrong, then I'm going to show him the tape and go, look, asshole, the doctor just asked you, can you see? And four fucking times you are about to wipe your eye that they are questioning. I think you're talking to me. I'm your trainer. I'm seeing you're blind. I'm stopping the fight. And if you get fired for it, at least you, you had, to me, that's a legit argument. Miguel, he was screaming, I can't see. Round three, he's fucking, dude, it's, it's, it's not sad because Fontura had the broken nose. That's what I'm like, dude, yeah. they kind of, it's kind of here. Right. Right. And Fontura, he, the, the broken nose was causing him to bleed a lot, forcing him to basically breathe with his mouth open, yep. putting him in you much more danger. Well. Yeah, yeah, at the end of the fight. And I got, I was actually thought maybe his jaw was fucked up too because he was constantly like opening his mouth to fucking breathe because of all the damn blood that he was swallowing from the nose. So it's like, well, that definitely, you know, it was a goddamn even. Bit of blood fucking bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I mean, I don't even know if we can call it even because I think that blood, at the very least for Fondura, the blood wasn't getting into his eyes causing him. I mean, yes, it's hindering his, his breathing. So I guess maybe that is even, yeah. But one dude can breathe, like you said, one dude can't see. Can't uh, see. Which, which do you think is a much more dangerous one? I would have to say that the seeing one is, right? If we had to put them. Yeah. It's like, you yeah, I definitely want two eyes. Yeah. 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 I, can, I got two ways to breathe, and that's my nose and my fucking mouth. mouth. I've got one way to fucking see. And if that's uh, hindered, then, you know, it, it's a bad deal. And it almost reminded me of, of Tyson back when he lost to Buster Douglas, where his cornermen, they didn't even have an end swell to put That's it right. on that fucking eye. They got a damn latex glove that they filled up with cold water and I think ice to use yeah. that. And it looked so amateurish. It's like, dude, what the fuck? You know, uh, and that that what what Tim Zhu is saying, no comment to that question speaks volumes. You didn't say yeah. shit, but holy fuck. Did that speak hella volume about what's going to happen, what's going to change in that corner? They did. I did not see them put anything as far as like um, ointments on there. There's a, a did. adrenaline, something or other. Did they? Yeah, he had some kind of brown, brown. Uh, uh, what? How would you say it? Yeah, he had liquid. Was it, was it, he put liquid, Q-tip. Okay. Yeah, he put a Q-tip in it and applied a very little. I don't know what it was. I have no idea. Um, but that he had a vial, a little brown vial, and he put a Q-tip. But he does that once, and it did nothing, dude. It fucking did not. It was bleed. Like you said, the, the blood was coming out of the Vaseline. Like, yeah. it literally was just coming right out. As soon as they put the Vaseline on, you would see a blood bubble come out. It's – they failed him. Um, he needs – uh, it's a reward. It's a. It's. It was a sad wait, wait, situation he, that he, got he Zoo got put in. I know that you, you cut cut off there. He needs. He needs to look at the corner. He oh, needs to oh. look at his corner. He he needs to look. It's a, it's just a bad situation all the way around. What happened to him last night? The other phone call that I would have made was to get them fucking water, bro. I swear I would not have let my two guys. If you want to talk about <laughs> uh, watching a pay per view, neither corner was pouring water on their fighters to wash the blood away from the previous round. It was so gross. It, they just kept using towels. Towels, towels. They probably had a million blood towels. When, dude, give, I would have been like, get these guys some fucking water. I would have called it Leonard Allerby if I had to. You're Al Heyman. You call anyone in that building, right? Yeah. Get your ass down there and give both of those dudes water. I don't need it to look like a fucking slaughterhouse. At the beginning of every round, forget. But, the but wouldn't that wouldn't that put too much water on the canvas in the corner there? Because sometimes I guess uh, like, you can put towels down. You can put towels on. There's ways because they've done it. You've seen them wash the fighters. Even get a fucking sponge. I don't know. Sure, but sure. the fact that they were just allowing the whole 
here's a little towel on you and get back out there. And the guy looks bloody as shit. The ring was a bloody massacre. Hey, hopefully uh, the Prime, uh, Prime knew what they were getting into when they got into a combat sport. But yeah, they didn't help themselves that much. Uh, where, you know, you think you've been like, dude, do you have any extra water, bro? Like, can we can we wet a towel or something? Jeez, yeah. almighty, man. Yeah, but, yeah. And you know what? Uh, and here's the thing. Uh, we're, I know we're going to completely criticize uh, Tim Zhu's corner, and rightfully so. But I don't remember seeing Fundora's corner put a Q-tip in his fucking nose at all. Do you remember seeing that at all? Because, like, there's times they put stuff on the, the, the Q-tip. Yeah, Vaseline. They, they, put, they put two Q-tips. They put a little bit of pressure on the right in between, and then they take it out, boom, 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 boom. Same thing with Fundora. The second he comes out, that shit's already gushing. Now, again, it is the nose. I understand that. But it's almost like they didn't put shit in there. You know, it's like, what the fuck? Dude? Like, what, what are these corner mats? Like, it, it was bloodier than it should have been, really. But every time Fundora stepped out of that corner, it's like, did they even wipe his fucking nose? He, he's like, Back in the I, day, I, they, they would shove Vaseline up your nose, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, they yeah. would even... Whatever anything to plug. Anything yeah. to plug, whatever ointment they have. Because I know they use, like, adrenaline. Uh, that's one of the, the ointments that they, I know they put on there. And every time, um, you know, <laughs> going back to Sue, they would put the Vaseline. But I swear, them smearing the gasoline is opening the gas even more every time they do that shit. It's like, uh, it's gotten to the point, dude, where I'm, like, on the, I, I'm always trying to, like, invent stuff. And I swear there's going to be something to help put that shit on without having to fucking smear it so goddamn much. I, I, I don't want to, oh. I don't want to be too mean here, but yeah. when they opened the fight, didn't they mention how one trainer was the dad and the other trainer is the uncle? Uh, oh, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching think, with my pops and my dad's always fucking talking to it. Fundura, I think his and I think their inexperience in both corners showed probably last night, right? They don't yeah. got. It's not like they went in there with Freddie Roach and fucking you know Lou Duva guys that they're yeah. like, no, your I sons with sure. your sons with me. I have my own team. This is one of the best cut man in the game. This guy's been doing it for you know what I mean. He did, it's your dad versus the uncle. <laughs> that might have that might have shown its ugly face of yeah. And we've heard about this in boxing where there's a lot of dads that are bringing their sons into the sport, you know, trying to make it happen. Oh, maybe we got a little bit of, of that last night with the inexperienced side of, of having that. Um, not too many times you're going to take an elbow to the head that opens up a three inch gash or two inch gash, whatever it was. It's pretty big. And uh, and then also Fandura, the broken nose, you know. You're probably right. They might have to look into their guy, too, on why he didn't do a better job of, of stopping that. Because that, that seems to happen more in boxing, a bloody nose, than, than what Zoo went through. So, so yeah, they, they might want to look at that, too. But, yeah, that was mentioned before the fight. And now we're talking about a lot of mishaps going on in the corners of, of those two. Yeah. Fighters. Yeah. So. It's almost like everything that could have gone wrong did have gone wrong. Um, I, I kind of, like... There was a couple of times <laughs> during this fight where I, I thought Tim was going to pull it off. Like, even with him being fucking bloody like that, I was like, oh, shit, he'll land. And I swear he, like, stops Fundora dead in his tracks. And I'm like, oh, shit, he's going to fucking do it. Like, and I would kept thinking to myself, like, damn, if, if Sue does it, if he comes off and he actually stops Fundora, it's like, damn, what a fucking story. It didn't happen that way. And, you know, we're talking about something different Sunday morning. But it would have been some shit if he was able to stop him. Because that, and my dad was kind of like, uh, once he saw that they weren't going to stop the fight, he's like, why isn't Fundora landing harder punches? He's throwing punches and he's landing, but it, maybe, I don't know if he just doesn't have the pop, I don't know, because he's got leverage, you know, that uppercut that he lands that he, you know, fucking damn near killed Lupin with was landing, and it's just like I, I, he, I was, I thought, once he realized, uh, Fundora realized that Tim Zhu's vision was impaired. Dude, go balls to the wall, bro. Go and fucking anything, any accidental glove smear will make it fucking worse. Make it worse as much as you can. Sorry, those circumstances are what they are. You have to take advantage of it. Your nose is broken. It's you know, bloody, yeah. like bloody like yeah. a motherfucker. It's you or him, bro, at this point. You know, it's a damn war. So 
I would have thought that, and my dad was saying the same thing uh, from, from what my dad was saying, that, that he would have go more balls to the wall and put more heat behind some of these punches. Because it was obvious from the beginning that Sue was the heavier puncher, the harder puncher, because he, of how hard he tagged uh, Fundora early on. And even throughout, I'm telling you, I thought there were a few times where he stunned Fundora, even as bloody as he was. And I was like, damn, if he pulls this shit off and knocks out Fundora, damn, that'd be a crazy ass story. Again, it didn't turn out that way. But on Fundora's side, I thought... Knowing that his his vision was impaired, dude, those punches you can land on him. You've landed on him. You thrown make make the jab a power jab. You know you're landing the jab. Put some more pop into that shit. Maybe you can stop him. Maybe you can stop him. I don't know. But it, it, I would have thought that knowing that his vision was impaired, that he would put some heat behind the shots. And it was more scoring points, scoring points. It's not to say that that because there was one time, as a matter of fact. There, I want to say in the third round, towards the end of the third round, where he landed an uppercut, and I was like, oh, shit, did, was Tim, like, stunned for a second? I was like, oh, damn. But It was a third round. You're talking about the third round, yeah, when he comes in aggressive, bro. When he comes in aggressive, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, he did get hurt. Yes, he did. And, he hurt. Yes, and I was like, did. oh, crap. So, yep. uh, you know, it, it was very, it was, I mean, another both of their corners, huh? Another moment. His corner should have realized their guy couldn't fucking yes, see. Yes, and it was still before the end of the fourth, so it still could have been a no contest there. Everything that you're saying, you wish would happen to a fighter when the cut was delivered by a punch. Mm. Uh, when a, when a fighter goes down early in a fight, you know, and they get dropped, and the re the corner man's like, "No, man, this is how it goes." Andre Ward and um and um Hunter. Oh, Kovalev, yeah, when Hunter is telling Ward, all legends go down, and what do they do? They get up, right? That 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 speech. I don't like to be telling my guy that when it's a fucking elbow accident. This fight yeah. shouldn't even be going on. Like, come on, prove yourself, man. Like, yeah. what? And, and and you 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 got it around the money for what? To beat fucking Vendora? We'll yeah. have a rematch. You know, like, yeah. we're not talking about a pound for pound like fucking Crawford or, you know, Canelo for the undisputed fucking super artists. You know, we're not talking about those fights where you risk it, where you really risk it. You're like, you know what? I'm gushing blood, but I don't give a fuck. I'm going to move forward. This I, fight wasn't worth that. I thought we were protecting the fighter when I seen the champion numerous times wiping his eye and i'm not even talking about when they were asking him literally in his face <laughs> ask yeah. them the question that happened last night and the doctor still ignored it you're a piece of shit i don't give a fuck that doctor is a piece of shit for that when a, when you ask a man if they're blind and they wipe the eye that you're questioning no nothing whatever he got a phone call but whatever um uh, uh he was wiping his eye in round three constantly like he had something in it. He was blind. Fuck. Yeah. And, and it was not, not, not like there are times where there are bad gashes. Like I, the only. Oh, other yeah, that's that I, it. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, the, the I remember um, some time ago, uh, um, Valero, Edwin Valero. Remember that dude? Yeah. Right? When yep. he fought Tony DeMarco, they, he had a and nasty Antonio. fucking cut from another fucking elbow, yep. too. I think they both went for the same punch, and their gloves collided, and then the elbows, uh, Tony DeMarco, who was taller, ended up cracking him with, like, an elbow or something like that, and it's just like, oh, shit. But I don't I don't think that was or directly over the eye. I think it might have been off to the side. So we've seen some other nasty gashes, but they were off to the side to where they don't impair the guy's vision. Right. And this one was just one of them that happened to be right right above the uh, the right eye, and it just started, or I forgot which one. That might have been left, I don't remember. But anyway, point Point is, it was right above one of the eyes. Okay, right the left, left eye, yeah. So, so right above the left, and it's like the blood was just in direct line of fucking contact. Like, brr, it would land exactly on that eye. So it was incompetence on on Tim Zeus cut man. Uh, I mean, even you know Fundora's cut man with that fucking nose. Uh, and after the fight, during the uh, the the interview where um. Uh, they were still in the ring where Fundora was being asked and, and Spence was brought into the I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah Spence was brought into the ring. Um, somebody was like trying to to get like the towel from uh, from Fundora. And Fundora was like, no, 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 I need it. I need it. And he kept like wiping his fucking nose yeah. even after the fight. Now, granted, by that point, they had already had more control because the fight was over and they were able to, you know, put more pressure on it. But I don't remember them, you know, maybe one time, like you mentioned, putting some some uh, Q-tips into Fundora's uh, uh, nose. But 
You do that every single round. You try to get that shit to stop. You put some pressure on there, you know, and then you 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 put the, you know, what I've seen, you put the clean one to soak up the blood that's already there. Then you grab another one, you put some Vaseline on that one, and then you pop that bitch in. It's like, you know, that I don't know what else, you know, if you can put the, the ointment in your nose or not. I mean, I'm sure that shit's some smelly stuff. So maybe you don't want it in your nose. You don't want another, uh, you know, hurdle on top of the, the bloody nose as it is. But it was incompetence. That's what it looked like Damn. on both of the cut man's corners. And the last thing that I will say about the cut was you hit it right off the start. Uh, the gash wasn't small, you guys. This was not a Hector Camacho Jr. moment for Zoo. This fucking cut was significant. I don't know how deep it looked, but it looked deep. It well, was an we elbow to the skull. Here, we don't have I know. a lot of meat up here. So you I, split this, you can see your fucking skull. Skull, I know. That's what I'm saying. If I was his trainer, I would have wiped it and been like, all right, let's see how bad it is. But to me, they were like, oh, it's good, it's good. Smack. <laughs> Smack with the Vaseline. Okay, all right, get up, man, get up. He never once wiped it and, like, moved and showed the camera, showed the doctor what it really was. It, 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 this was not a small cut. Let's not act like Zoo would have been a fucking sissy. If he would have backed in round two, they would have said, no, we're not moving on. He can't see and we're done. Yeah. So so that's that's what I got to end it with. You're right. This was no ordinary gas. This, was, this thing was bad when it happened. It didn't grow into bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I give him major props for pulling through that. Um, it sucks that he has a loss on his fucking record now. This way. That, to me, this it's way. a no. To me, wh whoever says... I don't have Zoo winning his next fight because of the Fondura one. You lose me as a, as an argument because I'm not I'm not even going there with you. To me, this they put him in a fucked up situation. Yeah, he lost the fight, but whatever. That was to me. It's a no contest, man. I'm not I'm not gauging him at all. What he showed to last night was hard, but his skill, all of that was was uh, compromised when the accidental fucking headbutt uh elbow happens in a round that should have just immediately stopped the fight and it would have been a no contest that's it we're done yeah like nobody loses nobody you know this wasn't this wasn't the fight uh that was worth fighting that over and giving up your undefeated record because it's going to be on there you know what i'm saying like maybe to yeah us, and, and that's a good way of looking at it andrew because that makes sense i don't i don't think i see this as a loss i don't think i see this as a loss you know and it sucks that his corner uh, it, he, he was he would not be considered no pussy if he decided to not do that but no. don't put your fighter in that position to have him make that choice you know that cut is bad don't be like all right you know you want to give up cool you want to give up but it's not because like no you're the have to protect him your fighter's gonna obviously want to continue don't you know do him the favor do him the solid that's why you're in his corner like that's a bad gash you probably can't see it obviously right unless you look up at the fucking big screen but you can't see it it's a bad gash dude the blood is getting into your eyes I'm going to give you this third round. If it's bugging you, we're fucking calling it. You know, and it's still before the fourth. You, you can still call it at that point. It'll be no contest. Everybody gets their belts back. There's a rematch clause. Let's just do it. So it, it sucks that it ends this way for this fight in particular. For Zoo, I guess, because from ends up coming away with a victory with two belts that he wasn't going to have you know, 13 days ago, 14 days ago. Um, but then also um, the, uh, the, the losing the undefeated record and kind of the position that Zoo is now. It's like... He falls back to the back of the line because his fucking people were incompetent as fuck to pull the trigger, you know, on that shit. And it it, it sucks for a lot of people involved. There goes your undefeated record. There goes your belt. Uh, let's see what happens now in Sue's corner from here on now because I, that, that that said, what? I would love to ask Sue's cornerman, his trainer, mm -hmm. how many times does your fighter have to wipe his eye before you think that he's actually being blind? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. How many times? What's the count? Because we see him do it maybe 10 times a round. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and from you the guys can go from the beginning of a round. From, yeah. the be from round fucking three. In round three, he's hella like, dude, he's clearly fucking annoyed by this blood. He's never had this before. Yeah. Nah, I'm not going to go into it. Hey, Fondura, let's do the best thing now and scratch your Spence talk. I, I'm not buying a Spence fucking pay per view ever again. That boy's got some climbing out of some deep hole with me. That's a lot of money to put into someone who got annihilated by mm -hmm. Terrence Crawford. You look like Raleigh fucking Romero when you fought <laughs> Terrence Crawford. Yeah. Sorry, bro. 
you were being dropped by jabs on that <laughs> night. We're gonna start using Romero as the standard now. It's like don't, don't is, Romero yourself. Don't be don't, don't be a Raleigh in there. <laughs> you're fucking Raleigh Chihuahua Romero. Okay. Fuck out of here, like big dog. Not the big shark anymore, I guess. We're the big dog now. So Yeah. So so that uh, that that definitely um puts a, a kind of you know I would have I'm I'm happy that, that Fundora got the win because even though you know Tim was hindered, this corner didn't say anything. So what the that's fuck right. is Fundora gonna do? Stop the fight? No, he's like, okay, fine. You're gonna let your fighter continue. I'm gonna beat his ass. So that's right. Uh, nope, you know he he wasn't there to you know show sympathy. He was there to take two belts, and that's exactly what he did. So he got himself a victory. Uh, so we we got the the right guy won. You know, it, the fortunate yep. fight continued when it probably shouldn't have. But at the end of the fight, the right guy won. The scorecards were kind of meh. You know, I, I I'm I'm. I used to be of the opinion that as long as the right guy won, no biggie. But that that and to some degree, I'm still that. But when I see judges give these scorecards, I'm like, look, that was too damn close. The right guy damn near didn't win. I, I don't like it. Like, get the fuck out of here. You're not going to score another one. So, granted, the right guy won, but it was a lot closer than it should have been, and that judge shouldn't be fucking judging again. So, uh, I, I'm still, you know, as long as the right guy wins, but, you know, I'm like, uh, but don't let that judge judge again. Fuck that shit, because <laughs> it, it was too close than, than it should have been. So, in in closing this pay-per-view, what, what kind of grade do you think we can give PBC oh, and man. Amazon as an overall show, as the the fights, the performances, the the judging, the the outcomes of the fights. Um, because keep in mind, here's the thing. I don't know if it was just me. May, maybe it was just me, and maybe I'm just too harsh of a critic. I don't know. But the announced crew seemed a little nervous. Did they seem a little nervous? Sometimes they were like stumble over their words. Like Brian Custer did it a couple of times. Mauro Ronello did it a couple of times. But it's like these guys are pros. These guys have been on Showtime pay per view. They've had um, you know major fights. You know Canelo and whatnot on PBC. So I was like, what? Why are these guys? You know. And and then a couple of things. I'm watching Brian Custer talk, and he's talking about they're gonna go. They're gonna cut away to some segment, uh, some video package on Rolly Romero, and it does it for like a second, and then it comes back to him for a second, and it's like. What the fuck is going on? I, like it's just it was it seemed like I mean again it's their first show with Pam, with Amazon Prime I get it video but I was like this these guys need some refining to do like they they don't seem to have it down yet I would have figured with the experience that PBC and Al Heyman has with Showtime yeah it, it would yeah. they would have not had these issues right off the bat yeah no I I've never been really impressed with the PBC uh yeah production it, I've never been impressed with Showtime announcers. I was very impressed with Claudia Trejo. Oh, yeah, Trejo, yeah, yeah. Um, I like how she can... Or, or Trujillo, is it Trujillo? Trujillo, oh, there you go. That okay. sounds better. Yeah, okay. that that might be it. Um, Uh-oh, my family's home. Oh, but uh, I liked how she can translate, and her English is just as good as her Spanish, so you can really, you know, and no knock, but sometimes it's kind of hard to hear the translator because it's so, you know, he's got the accent still where she doesn't. She, you can understand both. So I thought I was like, man, she's gonna take over <laughs> with that kind of uh, with that kind of switch that she she can turn on there. So I like that about her. Um, overall, the production though, it's the same to me. It's the same Showtime and PBC guys. You see PBC. I guess they were calling Ugas Zap Judah last night. They had him on the big screen as Zap Judah, and it's what? Ugas. Oh yeah. shit! I didn't see. I saw that he put him on the big screen. But I didn't see that. Oh my god! Are you yeah, kidding got, me? Good lord! Yeah, I got I got it sent to me that it that they had put it <laughs> oh, put no. on its app, Judah. It's like, I'm and that's you, no you, that's PBC though, right? They no, were no, doing no, that, that PBC, all yeah. the time when they first got. It. I was like, dude, do you guys even know your own stable? You know, it's fucking weird. But they did it again last night. Maybe it's an inside joke for them now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's like there's a new guy and it's just hazing. They're like, oh yeah, that guy's name is Zeb Judah. Go ahead and talk on Okay, how do you spell Zeb? <laughs> uh, that shit, you know, I don't know, but that that a couple of times I was like, these these Amazon, you know, and I, I blamed it on Amazon Prime. They're, they're the the streaming service, so I blamed it on them. But um, yeah, there were a couple of times where I'm like, I, I don't know, Brian Custer seemed like he was a little nervous or something. He would kind of stumble over his words, and um, and then there was <laughs> was one time I want to say somebody uh, was I don't know if it was Trujillo or or or, or um, what the fuck's her name? I forget. Jordan, Jordan, uh, Brian. Um, Plant asked a question. It might have been Trujillo. Asked a question to like 
um, Dan Goosen or something, or is that for Joe Goosen? I forget which one it is. The one of the, the Goosen, right? Um, in, a, in doing the color commentator, and I don't think he was oh, even Joe. listening to the question, Joe. So I don't think he was even listening to the question that Trujillo gave him. And I, I he was quiet for a second, and I heard like, oh, uh, and then he starts going almost as if like Mario Ronaldo was like, dude, they're asking you a question, fool, what the fuck, right? And he's like, oh, there's dollars for me, okay, you know, and then he starts talking. So it was just stuff like that, where I'm like, and, uh, and, and, and then sometimes Joe says things that uh are hella irrelevant. Like, well, he just won from a majority decision where basically one judge or a split decision. Did you hear it? And he was basically one judge had it for one guy. Yeah. The other judges had it for the other guy. I was like, yeah, Joe, we all know that, buddy. That's what the announcer just announced, man. He's like, thank you, Captain Obvious. We can yeah. have all that. Like, yes. <laughs> he's, he's all, yeah, I don't know. I just have to meet this 300 word quote I'm trying to yeah, hit right now. Exactly. It's like, I don't know. Amazon Prime says I got to say 500 words. So I'm just going to, you know, like this essay that I'm writing or some shit. Oh, gosh. Yeah, but uh, what, what would you what would you grade it? I would what grade would you give the? I mean, not just the production, but the, the fights themselves, the overall show. Because uh, um, you ordered it on pay per view. Yes, I, I absolutely did not order it, but nonetheless, um, you know what? You, you get your, you get your money's worth. Like what? what how would oh you yeah. Grade it? What, what letter would you grade it? I would. Yeah, I would definitely. It's a B. It's not an A, but it's a okay. B. And I would say the Martinez fight helped out a lot. It's a great little fight down there. Those guys threw down. Same thing. They destroyed each other's faces. Both of them are so important. The undefeated kid, his whole yeah. fucking side of the head was swelling up. Martinez looked like his nose also fucking took a yeah, beating. He, got, he got gashed, man. It was like one might have been a headbutt. The other one was an extra punch. But Martinez was bloody on the ice, too. Yeah. So, so and then, um, uh, ah, Lara. Gets oh, the yeah. quick knockout. You know what I mean? You always like that. You never liked. And they were actually making that fight seem like it was going to be a boxing match, right? They were kind of going down. And then they're like, oh, a punch lands. There it is. It's us. It was like, oh, cool. We got through that one. All right. Fuck yeah. So you got your quick knockout. Action pack. Knockout. Knockout. That everyone wanted to see. The mm -hmm. right guy won in that fight. And the main event, look, for entertainment wise, how could you not be? These fucking dudes, listen. Another thing I get to bring that back, I wanted to talk about. What Fondura and Zoo did last night is the reason why people like us watch boxing. We're not talking casuals, we're talking diehards. Hmm. I'm talking about the, the people that know that these men will do things that normal men won't. And what you seen last night was two fucking warriors in that ring doing things that other normal people wouldn't. You see me. I would have thrown in the towel. You hear me talking right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, that man couldn't breathe. <laughs> his nose is swollen. He's tasting his own blood the whole fight. Wins. Zoo had no reason to continue. Had numerous times to back out when they're asking him. Just goes through it. He's got this fucking gash on his head. No one would have barely fought. Nobody fights through it. Mm -hmm. So I got to give him both standing on props respect much respect to that that's why i watch this sport you know what i mean mm -hmm. yes zoo is uh that old school fighter he takes on all comers he doesn't quit he ain't backing out so he got mad respect last night unfortunately came at the cost of his fucking undefeated record mm -hmm. and, and a couple of belts title. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so but that that was some machismo ass shit we were watching <laughs> last night bro yeah I, I i myself might give it a b plus uh it's kind of on the higher end there were a couple of things that i was just like kind of weird but you know the circumstances being what they were it's i i got the impression that that I, that's what i think happened that's this is my conspiracy theory i think al was like no my main event on my first fucking card is not going to end on no goddamn no contest ref or judge uh, no ref, doctor you better not stop that fucking fight or it's your ass so I suspect that was the direction they were going. And I, I kind of get that's that might be where the Tim Zoo's uh, corner people were. His corner were just like, no, you're gonna you're gonna let you know, almost like putting the pressure on him, like you're gonna really let this shit end on a note that no, no. They're obviously though they're not that he's not gonna let it end like that. He's gonna want to fight his heart out. And and he did. So, you know, at again at the cost of his of his uh undefeated record and his belt. But 
I would say not bad. You know, we we initially came into this idea of them being on Amazon Prime with a card like um, Sue and Thurman, and you coined it several times. Like that's not a main event. That's not a main event. That's not pay per view. We got our money's worth right from last night's card, so it, it came through. Um, yeah. You know, I was relatively satisfied. You know, they had the, the, from the beginning to the, the top. It was felt like the old school Don King kind of cards, where it's like there's title fights in every fucking card. There's even the smaller guys were there. Um, I was I was thoroughly entertained. I liked it, so I'm gonna give it a solid uh, B plus for overall. Uh, let's see, you know what um, fucking uh, I don't know Canelo does, you know, or can Canelo and Munguia are down the line or whatever the hell, uh, whomever else does pay per view stuff. But um, we'll see how the cards look from here on out. Not when a bad, not a bad first effort, right? Huh? When they're paying the main event guy thirty five mil, though, it's hard to put on an undercard. Yeah, I, that's understandable. Yep, that's uh. So maybe they need more of these than, than the other one, but um, <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be the case. Uh, so be, be, uh, before we, we close it out, uh, was there anything else you wanted to touch on regarding last night's fight or any other you know fight that we saw that you wanted to bring up? Nope. Just happy Easter. Everyone travel safe out there and uh, have a good day. Good day, Easter. Fantastic. I wanted to throw in just one last thing. Uh, for those of you who may or may not remember, hopefully you do remember, of course, we lost our good friend uh, Lee Hunish earlier, uh, mid, mid last year. Uh, today would have been his birthday. Today would oh, have been thanks, his birthday. Oh, well, thanks, Miguel. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> well, I thought uh, that yeah, was, yeah. Uh, Today, I think you have been uh, 55. So I uh, wanted to shout out to, uh, you know, uh, Lee Hunish, RIP, my friend. Um, you know, happy birthday up there in heaven. Hopefully looking down and seeing what we do, you know, continuing to, to, to do this because, you know, you got us into to this. And, uh, you know, we wanted to kind of give you a nice little shout out at the end of the card. Uh, you know, it's it's not only Easter, kind of kind of, you know, funny that it happens to be Easter, but also it's your birthday, man. So happy birthday, Lee. You know, happy hopefully birthday, you can hear bro. us. And thank you so much for uh, for you know being our friend for uh, as long as you were and as long as you were around. Um, so I wanted to end the, the show on that. Um, make sure to tune in next week. We'll be back. Uh, I haven't taken a look in at the weekend's fight cards if there are any this weekend, but we'll be back next week. Thank you all once more for joining us. Uh, as always, uh, it has been Fight Fiend Migs with Andrew. Don't get it twisted, Lavish. This is the Mad Boxing Show. Checking out. Have yourselves a good uh, Easter Sunday, and we'll see you guys next week.